scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Hallelujah. Occasionally, you find out that the burden of the Spirit rests upon you. See, the apostolic ministry is such that you sacrifice your life literally. You don't just sacrifice your time. You sacrifice your life. God can interrupt your life and your activity any day and any time. Because he pours upon your spirit the burden that he's carrying for a season, for a people. And you must stay in the secret place until you are able to articulate what he's communicating and to birth it properly. And trust me, birthing spiritual things are painful. So you get to a point where you will have to choose whether or not you really want to carry this mantle. That's why apostles and prophets in the Bible were lonely people. They were abnormal human beings. They were controversial human beings. Their lives, that's why many of them did not marry because I'm sure that God just said, look, let's, let's save women heart attack from the madness of these people. The, the mantle will change you. It literally will reconfigure you into something you may not want. You are like a puppet under the influence of an agency you cannot stop. That's why the Bible says the church was built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. You know how thick a foundation must be to carry any structure. Any structure at all. Hallelujah. And so, sometimes when you find out that I retreat like this away, it's not just to go and play around. It's an intense communication of the body of the spirit. Brothers and sisters, let me submit to you that if you want to do ministry God's way, you must not just love God, but you must stay on course at all times. He says, I will stand upon my watch and I will set myself upon the tower and I will see what the Lord will say. Because you cannot afford to speak to people um, the things that are not being truly communicated by the Spirit. There are people inside and outside. God draws them by himself so that they will hear the precepts of the Spirit. And by the grace of God, in every city and in every region, God will always raise apostolic and prophetic platforms to not only regulate the spiritual climate within that region, but to serve as the gatekeepers within that region. Hallelujah. They serve as the envoys, the communicators of divine truth. They serve as the, the ones with whom um, divine realities can be communicated. And so it is very, very important that we realize and appreciate it. Truly, let me tell you, brothers and sisters, the apostolic ministry is a strong ministry. Forget 
you can decide to do ministry men's way right but if you really want to carry the mantle and the grace of men like Smith Wigglesworth William Seymour if you want to become a continuation of this system of God's kingdom advancement then you must stay it will cost you I've told us again and again not everything in the kingdom is a gift there are some things that are rewards listen let me tell you it is on account of this sacrifice that the Bible says he suffered no man to do them wrong it says he reproved kings for their sake saying touch not it's not just because you know a lot of times men of God threaten people with curses if you touch me I will curse you no the Bible says a cause causeless shall not stand so it's not just making pronouncements but that there is a way that certain vessels sacrifice their not just their life their lifetime to carry certain communications of the spirit for a generation they may look strange you may not understand however they are often at the pivot of kingdom activities and I say this so that we can appreciate the truths that we receive here and do not trivialize them don't just see Fridays or any other day as okay koinonia let's come worship team and then the word comes and then you pray and then you exchange pleasantries it's more than that God is making you become something and you have gone too far even if you live right now it's like a virus you have been infected I lift my hands to you you're the awesome God I lift my hands to you awesome God awesome God I lift my voice to you you're the awesome God I lift my hands to you awesome God awesome God I lift my voice to you you're the awesome God I lift my hands to you awesome You're the awesome God. I lift my hands to you. Awesome God, awesome God. I lift my voice to you. You're the awesome. Listen to what you are singing. I lift my hands to you. Awesome. Just the voices. Sing it from your heart. I lift my voice to you. You're the awesome God. I lift my hands to you. Awesome God. Awesome God. Ask the Lord to open your eyes. Open our eyes in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord revealed something to me and told me to share it with the body of Christ. And please, I want you to pay attention to this teaching and I want you to give us many people, especially the ministers of the gospel. The Bible says, He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. A true apostolic ministry is not bounded by this geographical constraint. This is just a platform. But the message is to the body. Hallelujah. I've spent my life studying the moves of God. Studying revivals. I have studied 
almost every known revival in human history that is recorded or at least noticed i have studied the great awakenings i've studied the azusa street revival i've studied the revivals in the times of the generals right from alexander Dowe, maria woodward eater madame gunion the European revival with men like Smith Wigglesworth, great women like M. Simple McPherson, and several others. I have studied the revivals in Nigeria right from the time of Bishop Samuel Ajayi Crowder to great apostolic voices like Apostle Babalola of Christ Apostolic Church to the holiness movement that was pioneered by great men like Pastor W.F. Kumui and several other people and then great men like Archbishop Benson Idahosa and then the spiritual renaissance that happened in the last 10 years that was the last time a major move of the spirit happened 10 years ago not just pockets of revivals. The last major move of the Spirit. Ten years. And this is a ten year cycle. And another one is about to begin. You're the awesome God. I lift my hands to you. Awesome God. Awesome God, I lift my voice to you. You're the awesome God, I lift my hands to you. Awesome God, oh. one more time. I lift my voice. You're the awesome God. Listen, in every major move of God, there are three things that have happened. Number one, open heavens a strange season where the heavens are unusually open dimensions of graces and possibilities that would not otherwise have been experienced by the people within that region there is an unusual open heavens manifesting in healings miracles civilization industrialization whatever it is number two intense and heavy criticisms and persecutions the move of God has always been characterized by intense heavy almost unbearable persecutions number three many maybe not all but many of the moves of God were cut short of their full spiritual potential. Many of the moves that you read, both in the Bible, we see men like Samson, who was appointed to be a judge. The full potential of the manifestation of his ministry did not find expression. Men like Moses, who was supposed to take the people out of Egypt, the land of bondage, into the land flowing with milk and honey. Something seemed to happen in the middle of those moves. And I have spent my life studying it because the move of God that will return the Christ must be dealt with with precision, intelligence, and it must be finished to the latter. 
Hallelujah. Is God speaking to us tonight? Now, if you don't love God and the agenda of God, you will not find what I'm saying tonight interesting. If you are just a casual Christian wanting marriage, wanting a car, house, a good grade, and, and you just came because you are hungry, give me tea, give me bread, this will not concern you. But if you are one who is connected to the love and the agenda of God, this teaching tonight will resonate in your spirit. Many of you will not be able to sleep after this teaching tonight. Hallelujah. There are many reasons why revivals start. And there are many reasons why revivals stop abruptly. And if we do not identify some of these reasons then we may not be able to completely live out the fullness of God's expectation. All over Nigeria, as a case study, we see that there is an awakening, campuses, different non-denominational meetings, even churches that will otherwise not be open to certain dimensions of the Spirit. The eldership may not be open, but there is a renaissance happening in the youth ministry. The youth and the children, something they themselves cannot explain. And in the midst of the persecutions and the rest, it's like a fire that cannot be quenched. Are we together now? This is very important. But more tragic is the reason why revivals end. Revivals end because of a very simple factor. And it's called the humanity. The humanity of men. The humanity. Please pay attention. The very fact that men are humans is a big limitation to the sustenance of the move of God. Every revival, every spiritual pursuit that has gassed out happened because the humanity of men impeded the pace with which the spirit was going are we together now let me tell you something when god begins to use you pay attention when god begins to use you the devil will never come to attack you he will only attack you before you are being used but if he does not prevail he will not come when the move starts the move of the Spirit and the gift of the Spirit will be working in your life and hell will be quiet. Please watch this. You will continue building the churches, building the cathedrals, healing the sick, doing mighty things and hell will be silent. Sometimes you can be mistaken that it is just your faith that is flawlessly defeating the devil. Keep going. Satan is not a fool. He is a liar. He is a deceiver. But he is not a fool. Satan has an advantage of age. And that advantage of age has afforded him the opportunity to study mankind. Are we together now? Before our dispensation of humanity started, he was there. And he has studied the moves of God right from Bible and modern history. And he knows that there is one factor. It's called the humanity of men. The humanity of men. The fact that men are human and frail is something that if you do not understand and create a spiritual system that overcomes your humanity, you may never last in the move of God. I lift my hands to you. I sing this song because I woke up with it. While I was just waiting upon the Lord, I, I started singing it from the realm of the Spirit. You know there are songs, I told you that songs are like ladders in the Spirit. There are times that songs represent what God is doing in a season. 
So you have to keep singing them until the essence of their strength is ministered to you. Then the song will stop ministering to you. Not that the song has lost its power. It has accomplished what it was sent to do. There are many songs that have come from this altar and we sing it for a few weeks and then it just dies down. It's an impartation. The songs help you rise to a dimension. I leave my hands to you. Awesome God, awesome God. I lift my voice to you. You're the awesome God. I lift my hands to you. Awesome God. One more time. Lord, we lift our voice to you. You're the awesome God. I lift my hands to you. Awesome God. When John was caught up in Revelations, chapter 4 and 5, he was before the throne room and he began to see four living creatures that were a reflection of the multifaceted dimensions of the Christ. Because everything in the throne is a reflection of a dimension in God. Everything. From the elders, to the creatures, to the sea, right? To the rainbow, to the thunder. Everything is a reflection of the dimension of Christ. So when the Bible says his hair is as white as wool, it's a communication of his righteousness. When he says his eyes, is his face is like the brightness of the sun, and so on and so forth, right? But there are four living creatures that communicate to us the different dimensions of God that are resident in man. The first living creature that John reveals to us, and Ezekiel also shows us, right? And Daniel the prophet also sees that the first dimension is the face of a lion. The face of a lion reveals the dominion dimension of God. The fact that God is king. The fact that he is royalty. Incontestable with any king and any government. Please pay attention. The, the face of a lion reveals our dominion. It reveals the fact that we are kings and priests. According to Revelation 5 verse 10. It says we have been made unto our God kings and priests. And we shall reign in the earth. So that dimension of God shows you that you cannot be under situations and circumstances. It lets you know that you are like him in the similitude of the lion of the tribe of Judah. Are we together now? When you catch that dimension... Then you have the consciousness of who you are in Christ. You have the consciousness that you will refuse to allow life situations to put you down. Are we together? The dimension of him being king. When he was born king, the wise men came and they offered gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh to the king. Hallelujah. Now but... When you come around that dimension alone, it has a consequence. And the consequence of camping around only that dimension is pride and arrogance. Having the revelation of your kingship and your dominion and who you are in Christ alone is not a balance. In one of the visions, the prophet saw the four faces in one body. And then in another, they were separate. Because they see in part. And all of them prophesied according to the limit of their perceptions. Like when the Bible says the streets of heaven are made of gold. They are not made of gold. Gold was the best communication that his eyes could interpret with. It's more than gold. It's not gold. Are we together now? Is God helping us? And so, we see that pride is the natural consequence of camping around that dimension. And so, you have arrogant people in the body of Christ. Right? 
You give them pure water, they throw it back at you and say, I'm a king. Kings don't take pure water. Get me Eva, cold one, in a tray. Serve me like a king. All of this childishness are manifestations of this exaggeration of one dimension. And God knows. So immediately, to balance it, the next face is the face of a calf. And a calf speaks of servanthood. And so you are reminded immediately that you are not only a king, but you are a servant. Are we together now? That servanthood dimension now comes to balance your revelation of you being a king. So that as you move around, I cannot do this, you will realize that the reason why you are giving dominion is to serve. Many people hate being called servants because our theology has taught us that sons and servants, servanthood is an insult to sonship. Go and read your Bible and you'll find out that the hallmark of sonship is servanthood. The ultimate proof that you are a son indeed is when you become a servant. It says, permit this mind to be in you. Philippians 2 from verse 5, which was also in Christ Jesus. He said, although he was equal with God, a king, he did not consider it as a thing to be grasped. Then he reduced himself to become a servant, dying the death on the cross. So he says, let that mind be in you. That the moment God anoints you, you realize that that servanthood dimension must find expression in your life. There are many men who are not true servants, especially in the body of Christ. We have kings, Oga, but very few people are servants. That shepherd's heart, that servant heart, many men of God lack. They don't pray for their congregations. They cannot pay the price to serve. Jesus was teaching this dimension and he called the disciples and guarded his loins with a towel and got water. And told all of them, come, I want to wash your feet. In ancient times, because they didn't have means of transportation like us, they could use camels and the rest and then they could walk. So when you came into the house of a man, part of the respect is that their servants or other people would come to wash your feet to make it clean. Then you can get into the house. And Jesus said, I want to do it for you. That's why the disciples were amazed. They, you can't do this, come on. We have seen you at the apex of your ministry. You are a king indeed. He said, don't worry. Peter said, no way, I won't allow you. Then he told them something. He said, if I, being Lord, has washed your feet, make sure you go and do the rest. It doesn't mean go and wash the feet of others. Take this ideology as you do ministry. That when you get to a point where you are king, remember you are servant too. Let me tell you something. The reason why many people never access certain dimensions of God is because that dimension is revealed and left for servants. One of it is the dimension of illumination and spiritual revelation. Until you become a servant, you will never have access to true light. The Bible says, Revelation 1 verse 1, it says the revelation of Jesus, which he gave unto his servant John. Right? He gave unto his servant John. In Joshua chapter 1 verse 1, when, when Moses was dead, hear God's testimony about him. He came and he said, Moses, my servant is dead. Paul, the very one who taught us sonship and revelation of our dominion in Christ, calls himself, I, Paul, a bond servant. The word bond servant, there, for you to understand the concept of bond servanthood, you must understand what we call the concept of jubilee. In ancient time, jubilee was after seven Sabbaths. That means seven years, Right? Once the Sabbath year is always the seventh year. And so after seven Sabbaths, 49 years, the 50th year is declared a season of Jubilee. And certain activities happen in that season of Jubilee. Are we together now? Yeah. In the season of Jubilee, if you owed somebody or someone owed you, you release them, they go free. And then if you had servants and slaves that maybe you captured in the time of war, you would release them to go free. But watch this, if in the course of the slave's service to his master, the master treated him well and with love, on the day or in the year of jubilee, listen, when he now releases the servant to go, the servant will say, I'm free now, but I choose to return to you. Are you together now? 
I return not because you now captured me in war. I return willingly. And I want to continue serving you because you are a good master. And that way, the master will now pierce his ears and put earrings in it as a symbol that, look, I am not violating Jubilee. This guy had an opportunity to go, but he came and willingly gave himself because of love, not chains. It was in that similitude. He says, I, Paul, a born servant. Meaning, I have a choice so, to pack up and say, God, I don't have any business with you. But the love of God has constrained me as though a man who is under chains. Are we together now? I, Paul, a born servant. Paul rejoiced at the excellency of being called a born servant than being called an apostle. I, Paul, a born servant. A born servant. At the end of his life, he looked and he said he was the least of all the apostles. That it was a privilege for him to have served. Is God speaking to us? Two dimensions. Now again, just like the first, there is a limitation too. When you stop and come around you just being a servant alone. Are, are you getting blessed already? When you stop around that dimension, the trouble is, you can get to a point where you can literally kill yourself. And so the next face gives you a balance. The face of a man. That's where your humanity comes into place. The third revelation that balances up servanthood is your humanity. There are times that people walk their lives out in a bid to pursue the agenda of the kingdom. People literally wear away their body. One man in modern history and modern revival who was a victim of that was the Welsh revival. Right? Um, what's his name? Many of you don't know them. Evan Roberts, thank you. Evan Roberts was a young man. He lived only a few years after the revival and he died. Because he got to a point where, like I'm sharing with you, the burden of the Welsh revival, I mean the city of Wales and all this place was catching fire. People would literally read about the, the revival on newspaper and then explosions of the gifts of the spirit, explosions of salvation and the rest. And he felt a need. He was so tired. He was not sleeping. He was not resting. He paid little attention to his health. And he literally weared himself to death. The third dimension that we see in the throne room is the face of a man. And this is very important, especially for men of God. Because sometimes we are embarrassed to admit the fact that we are humans. Because we... We have taught a theology that absolutely lets us know that we love God and we fear God, which is correct. But then we are embarrassed to accept our humanity. And we wear ourselves out. There are men of God who are embarrassed to eat food. They don't eat where people are because they feel, if I eat, you would think I'm not fasting, I'm not a, a serious person. And people do all kinds of things. There are people who, who specifically work themselves to being lean. Intentionally. Not necessarily because he was fasting that made them so. It's like a pride because it looks like those who really carry the anointing are not fat. You say, watch A and B and C. Why will you be like this? We don't trust this anointing you carry. And so people literally strangle away their humanity in a bid to justify that they are spiritual. Jesus, your Savior, who was the Christ, got to a point in his life where when he went to funerals, he wept. When they told him, Lazarus, whom you love, is dead, he went and he had to break down. It never meant he was not God. Are we together? He broke down and wept. When John the Baptist, his cousin, was told that he had died, he retreated away from ministry. And ran to a mountain just to go and mourn John. And when he went to mourn John, people just heard he was passing. Let me tell you something. It's amazing the kinds of expectations that people have for you when you carry the anointing. They don't expect you to be human. 
Are we together now? Absolutely. So let it not be strange to you, men of God, when you find out that people's expectation, you can walk yourself to death. There are people who call maybe around 1 or 2 o'clock and I pick and I'm like, ah, and I say, ah, apostle, you are sleeping. <laughs> now, I don't understand the meaning of that, but if I do, this is what it means. Come on now. I mean, I'm sleeping, you are sleeping too. Who is praying for who? <laughs> See that? And sometimes, as funny as it is, that statement embarrasses you. It looks like a sting to your, your, your spiritual perception. The way that they have perceived you. And you feel, no, 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 no. I wasn't sleeping. I was just nodding my head around. I will soon read the Bible. Are we together now? The face of a man. There was a time on Sunday, Jesus was hungry. I'm sure after service, he was on his way and he just meandered into a field of corn. Ha! And the people saw him. And they were surprised. And then this and that and that, he had an encounter and then he ate corn and people were saying all kinds of things. There was a time that um, the prophet was hungry. Have you read that? Who was hungry? Say it again. Was hungry. As soon as he got to the woman, the widow of Zarephath, he said, Madam, water. Not what is your problem. Madam, service my humanity. I'm dying. I've trekked a long distance. While she was coming, he said, Please prepare bread for me quickly. And the woman said, Abba, man of God, be, be fair on me. You are a prophet. Don't you have the eyes to see? What happened to your eyes? There was a time, the family of a prophet, they were about to carry the children as collateral. Is it in your Bible? There was a time, Elijah, the fiery prophet, was afraid. And a woman made him run. A man called down fire on soldiers but ran away from a woman. He ran away to a point that God had to say, Elijah, why are you here? He said, Kai, God, just follow me. I'm, I'm coming with a very powerful message. Are we together now? Humanity. Jesus, the Christ, almost aborted salvation willingly. Many of us do not know. The Bible says we do not have a high priest who has not been touched with the feelings of our infirmities, limitations. Jesus was tempted like us in every way. One time, um, let me share with you something very humorous. Uh, I think we're, we're somewhere and a very pretty lady was passing and we're all looking. Me too, I was looking. Listen, <laughs> when I was looking, I noticed, I won't tell you the person who, who was with me. He now tapped me and said, ah, apostle. <laughs> and I quietly, I was, not to mean, ah, man of God, what happened to your spiritual seriousness? Ah, no, 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 you are not supposed to be seeing this. You are supposed to be seeing men like trees. Hallelujah. Never forget that part of your construction of being like Christ, in that design, your humanity was not taken away. It was left there. Jesus at Gethsemane looked at the Father and for the first time, he wanted to reject being the Word. Because the word means living logos, meaning a manifestation of the thoughts of a man. Anything Jesus was doing, that was what the father was thinking. Are you following me now? And for the first time, he wanted to do what God was not thinking. He said, Father, if it be thy will, Kai, let this cup 
Brothers and sisters, if it happened to Jesus, it will happen to you. I know that you won't receive this. You will hate me. You say, yes, come back now. I'm back. Are we together now? If it be possible, take this cup off me. But then he quickly remembered. He said, nevertheless, nevertheless, not my will, Kabbalah, but thy will be done. Here is my heart, my mind, Lord is my life, my everything. Take it, it's yours alone. Sing it one more time. Here is my heart, my mind. Listen. The humanity of man is a very serious part of him. We overlook it, but this is the part that destroyed people in revivals. Let me quickly just round up the four living creatures and then we'll get into the crux of the matter. Sometimes, God brings the balance again. You can be so human. Listen. That if you allow your humanity to have a toll on you, it will cause the devil to wreck you and destroy your life because you will give excuses for everything and say, I am human. Are we together now? And so a pastor gets to a point where he's weak and weary and he starts sleeping around with everybody and if people are saying, he who does not have stoned you, I have um, seen you cast the first stone. In 10 years, I slept with two ladies. Wouldn't you clap for me? Didn't I try? You know, we are human. And people say, it's true. It's true. That was what Jesus invoked to free the woman who was caught in adultery. He said, he who does not have sin. In other words, whoever among you here who wants to claim his humanity is not finding expression, cast the first stone. And the priests and the Pharisees remember the things they have done around the temple that people have seen. Just threw the stone and went away. Then the final revelation is that you are divine. The face of the eagle. So when you get to a point where you are so human, sometimes it can bring weakness in you, inferiority in you, and it can let you see that this assignment is impossible. No, I can't do this. God, you are giving me a mandate to the nations. I'm, I'm only a child like Jeremiah. I'm only 21 years. I'm only 30 years. I'm only 40 years. I'm only 50 years. Or I'm alone. And he told Jeremiah, do not say I am a child. I'm aware that you are human. Or like Moses who said, Lord, I'm a stammerer. Stammerer, are you deaf? Have you not heard me pray to you? How long did it take you to get the words together? I'm a stammerer. And God said, who created the body? Do you not know that you are divine? You must get to a point where you realize that in spite of your humanity, you are divine. That gives you comfort. Hallelujah. Now back to revivals. So that you can appreciate the things that I'm saying. I showed you these four dimensions. Because every one of them represents the progressions of true revivals. It first starts with revelation and access. Possibilities. Before God begins to use you, He brings you to a point where you see that the nations are conquerable. Have you seen people like that? Oh my goodness. About to be used by God. Lord, I can take this city. Give me Zaria. Give me Nigeria. Give me Kaduna State. Give me the north. Give me the world. I can establish the church. Lord, you are revealing to me that my ministry will have 1,000 branches. I'm ready for it. That's the lion speaking. Because the lion is a bold animal. Are we together? The king of the jungle. Fearless. So you say, Lord, it doesn't matter. I will heal the sick. Let them criticize me. I will heal. Then God says, all right, thank you. This is all I want. The gates be opened. Then you become a calf. And then... By the time you are serving people, the very people you are serving begin to stab you. 
You start a church and somebody comes to collect the church from you. Ah! You were not told that that was part of the things you will meet in the journey. When the brothers, remember Joseph showed us this. He woke up and had a dream and said, I saw it. The sun, the moon, 11 stars were bowing down. And the father looked. He said, you mean even me will bow to you? Joseph said, are you joking? This is my destiny. But he did not know the progressions that will lead to that destiny. Are we together? Then his brother betrayed him. Before he would reconcile, they now sold him into slavery. Before he would settle on that one, a woman now comes. He was almost, I'm sure he would think that promotion was now coming for him, that they were making him, Potiphar was now liking him. Then, that thing that was supposed to be an advantage, one day he goes to Potiphar's house and meets a woman who looks at him, and that becomes the source of his trouble. His service and faithfulness to Potiphar got him into trouble. And then to jail. Then he now interprets the dream to somebody who forgets about him for two years. Are we together now? And then he became human. He broke down. Listen, let me tell you the truth. And men of God, learn this. The moment you begin your journey of servanthood, realize that you are human. So when a revival starts, Satan will never strike when it is the lion that is moving. Keep moving. Oh, all of you, come and see what God is doing. There is a move of God in this nation called Koinonia. Look what God is doing. Joshua Selman and everybody is happy. Then he begins to serve. Mm. Then the day comes, you look and say, is he only Ben Gada who preach or pray? Then a day will come, you now look and say, what does it take to sit in front here? Then a day comes when you begin to go through fierce persecutions. Your church suddenly turns to you and says, we have noticed that there are some radical young people in this church who are not complying by the constitution of the church. And we are about to take a very decisive action. And you are wondering, that is me. And then you stand on stage and the preaching is all about you. There are people, some of you are sitting here looking at me. And these people are the ones who insult elders. And they do all kinds of things. They pray in one language like that and so on and so forth. And, and then you are amazed. Your life becomes, first you will, you will pretend you can take it. That's usually how we are. Ah, forget it. I'm, I mean, I'm, it's not today. Ode she. <laughs> then you continue. The church starts. The ministry starts. Right? Or as a sister, the marriage does not come. Lord, I will keep serving you. Marriage or no marriage, what is a man's self? The devil does not come then. That's just a servant speaking. Wait until the human starts speaking. A day comes in your life, no matter who you are, you will have to stand face to face with your humanity. Servanthood reaches its end. And it says, I've tried. The Bible says, do not muzzle the ox that treads upon the corn. Because even it can be tired. Are we together now? It is at this point where your humanity comes in. The reality of the vicissitudes of life. You are serving God in ministry, but you just hear a news that somebody in your family died. And you are saying, what is, what is going on? As if that is not enough, you just hear that your elder sister's husband beat her and threw her out. And said, Lord, you are faithful. I will give you thanks in all things. The servant is still speaking. Satan never comes. It's like a spiritual meter. He keeps watching. And then a guy comes into your life and you are happy. You are saying, Lord, so finally, this is how you have planned it for me. Before your smile finishes, he just sent you a text and said, we went to pray. And honestly, they told me you are not the one. It's not like you are bad. It's just that you are not the one. You now add the balance of that pain on what has been there. And a day comes like Jesus, you will break down. Listen, people lie in church. That's why we don't access truth. Those times are the times you go to pray and there are no words to say. 
you just keep moving up and down. It's not like you don't have prayer points. You don't even know what to say. You don't know if it's tongues, you will start or praise and worship. You play a song and off it back. The song that used to bless you is like it's irritating you. Lord, you took my pain away and then you gave me joy. You're my peace, my melody in the center of the storm. You gave me a brand new song to sing to you. That's why I will lift up my voice and sing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you gotten to that point in your life? Where as a man of God, you carry your Bible and you can't read it. It's not backsliding. You open it and you don't know what else to read. At that point, the devil is ready to come. When Jesus was fasting to prepare for ministry, Satan was just hanging around. He knew there was a time he would come. When Jesus was weak at the apex of his humanity, then Lucifer comes and says, Jesus, Jesus barely answered and said, Kai, but you say, Abba, how can you be killing yourself when it is within your power? Have you forgotten you are the word? If you have forgotten, let me remind you. Once my master, always my master. Let me remind you, Oga, you can turn stones to bread. Don't think Jesus just say, oh, God forbid. No, it's not true. It's not the way the Bible puts it. There are possibilities you may never consider until you are a human being. Are we together? You made a vow that you will never marry a married man as a second wife and a time comes when your humanity comes satan can come directly or through a friend and say see there's a way we do it it's not are you a fool there's a, you can you can plan this thing and for the first time in your life you will you will be shocked that you are considering that possibility you will rebuke yourself afterwards but at that point or the first time a married woman now looks at a young man of 21 and something rings in her that can't I have this boy as a sugar son? Since this stupid man is not, is not around. Now listen, those who do not understand spiritual growth will criticize those people and say, I'm, I'm disappointed. How about my mother? No. Humanity. Are we together? I've seen pastors who got to a point where they told them, look, you are suffering, no? If you want ministry to move, what is there to wash your eyes? Abba, you are believing as if you are the only one. After all, the most important thing is your salvation. Are you not born again? Say, yes, I am. Let them wash. It's an addition. It's all, it's still God. No matter how it comes. But let me tell you, you get to that point. A man of God once called me. And a prophet told him that he can help him and, and fix some things. And there were certain flakes and leaves that he would bury around the church. True story. And he'll be fasting for seven days. He said at the seventh day, even if a pin passes his head, is over him, his eyes will see it. It's easy to talk when you have crowd. Wait until you walk with 12 people for three years. The devil will, he will come before. Then he will allow you. Have you seen people like that? You want to give them something, they refuse. God forbid, leave them. When they search around, no options. You now come and say, are you in any way interested in this? It has happened to ladies. A guy will ask them at 24, say me. You look at you. The guy will leave them. You will come back at 35 and say, I'm still around. Say, please, I don't know about... He said, I thought you said God. Say, say, forget, God has spoken again. The humanity of men is something that killed these revivals. Watch this. So when this revival is started, Satan tried to stop it. But when he found out that it was too late, he said, I'm coming back. Read your Bible. The Bible says he left Jesus for a season. And he waited. At the apex, he now started bringing people into the meeting. And they started saying, look, the whole city is already taking this man. We are losing our ground here. Let's start coming up with something. And all of a sudden, Judah started looking at the treasury and said, me, I know what is there. I'm the one counting the money. Why are we not 
helping ourselves. The Bible says those who walk by the altar should live by the altar. What is all this one? I can't be holding money that I'm not spending. All those motions are Satan coming back. There was a time he entered Peter and spoke to Jesus. And Jesus looked and said, Kai, get thee behind me. And Satan said, you saw me. I'm coming back. This time around he came in through Judas. That's what happened to Samson. Samson got to a point where he tore the lion. Satan said, leave him. Kill the lions. Continue. And then at the point where he needed a wife so desperately, a strange woman came called Delilah. Samson was helplessly under the influence of this woman till he lost his, his, um, his hair and his eyes. Catherine Kuhlman was a woman of power. This woman moved in dimensions of the spirit very few people in our generation have walked in. But the time came she remembered that she was human. She wanted a man in her life like every woman will. And her keyboardist. The people who would come to church and play. Her humanity caught up with her. And her inability to manage that humanity aborted certain things. Alexander Doway got to a point where people exalted him. He was the spiritual mayor of his city. And then he got to that point and men said, Look, there is no difference between you and Elijah. We can literally put the Bible and see that you are him. He first said, No, 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 no. All glory to God. After a while, he said, truly, but me too, let me talk to myself. I'm really Elijah. And he went and dressed in Elijah regalia and died. Are we together? William Branham, the uncommon prophet. A man whose eyes were like that of an eagle. He would be talking with you, a stranger. As if you have met, it's not just like word of knowledge. Okay, your head is this, um, your this is that, you have tenor in your wallet. No. I mean, you'll be talking and say, Femi, um, how are you? How is Rema? This is how he talks. This is a stranger he has never seen. Say, what's the other challenge in, in, in Rema? What, what is the problem? Uh, but have you considered discussing it with uh, your uncle, Ule? This is, this is a stranger. That's how William Branham operated. It's not just like he will give you a word of knowledge, then you will confirm. You don't have to confirm it. He's conversing with you. Yet he got to a point, a hollow was literally seen on his head when they snapped him. He operated in that dimension of grace. But he came to a point where his humanity started tampering with the divine revelations he was writing. And he started writing certain teachings at the end of his life that became an error that even certain sects in the body of Christ have not recovered from today. Satan comes to you at a point where servanthood has led you to see your humanity. At that point where you are down, then he comes. He comes with suggestions. Very subtle yet forceful. He comes with all kinds of things. I say this not, not in criticism to the glory of God. The latest of this catastrophe that happened to the body of Christ happened this year. Right? I say it because it's something that is known. God TV. Rory and Wendy Alec. God TV is about maybe the second largest TV, Christian TV station after TBN. Is that true? TBN right now is almost, it's, it's, it's almost down. You know why? Because at the apex, when several things were happening, Crouch, um, 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 Jim Crouch, and then the other man, they are all dead now. At that point, the woman was struck with cancer. Bam! And it became an indictment in the ministry. Then all kinds of scandals started evolving. And before you know it, their humanity caught up with that reality. And right now, the ministry is where it is. God TV. Benny Hinn, at, as at the beginning of this year, when they were buying a, up a property in Plymouth, right? 
Benishim was there. Look at all the notable men of God that came around. They held different regional meetings. Great men like um, Matthew Ashimon Loa and the rest were there. While that was happening, the financial ministerial burden on the man was depressing him, his humanity. They needed millions of dollars within a short time to pay for that place. And it was depressing him. And in that depression, he started, you know, when people are humans, they become stupid. They do things you never believe can happen. And so he started having an affair with a woman outside of his wife. Very beautiful woman. See that? And then when the world was about to say, we see the revival that is coming. One day he got up in the place of work and told the world, I quit from God TV and left. Left the ministry till today. The great man of God, Benihim, a figure that we know and we admire and love so much, about three years ago, was preparing to go for a crusade when he was almost collapsing. And people said, no, this is, this is terrible. I mean, this is a man, this is a healing evangelist. He went to the hospital, they had to give him magnesium shots and all of that. And shortly after that time, in February that year, preparing for another crusade, and a divorce letter comes. In less than 24 hours, about half of the partners in the ministry left. Benihim, our great Benihim. Benihim was broken. Benihim was broken. My wife, I have taught on integrity in marriage. We have grandchildren. When a grandmother leaves her husband, that's a serious issue. We have grandchildren. Couldn't you just endure? No, we are humans. I don't know if God is ministering to you tonight. One person that has overcome is Benihim. I love him. He has shown the world in modern day that it is possible. When they were joining him and the wife I was watching, I followed it. And I looked at him. I said, my father, my father, the chariots of Israel, you have shown with the people coming that it is possible. A man can conquer the grip of humanity. I lift my voice to you. You're the awesome God. I lift my hands to you. Awesome God. Awesome God. I lift my voice to you. You're the awesome God. I lift my hands to you. Awesome God. Awesome God. Every revival that fell, fell because Satan struck at the point where the people were humans. But they did not sustain the technology in the spirit. They didn't know. They knew how to receive power. But they, they, they did not know how to conquer this body. Paul said, I beat my body daily. Is it in your Bible? How many times? Daily. He said, let, let it not be that after having preached, I myself will be a castaway. Isaiah shows us the key. Chapter 40, please. For some of you, you will not need this message now. You will need it 10 years from now. You will look for this tape like the deer pants after the water. Verse 28, Isaiah 40 verse 28. Now you'll understand what the Bible was saying. Help us media. We'll read down to 31. Hallelujah. And so, he began to tell us, watch this. Hast thou not known? Question. He said, hast thou not heard? 
that the everlasting God, you know what everlasting means? No weakness, no backsliding. Every time the Bible begins to give God these qualities is because he's trying to contrast him to the limitation of man. He says God is everlasting. There are no breakages, no rising and falling. He says the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth. Listen, the Bible says he what? Faints not. So the Bible is talking about fainting. Mm. This is not backsliding. This is the humanity of man. He's helping us and showing us a key that will keep us 30 years in ministry. And when all the dust settles, you are still standing. Are we together now? 30 years in life that people will not look at you and say, I remember promise. There was a time this guy carried fire. There was a time in Zaria or in Abuja. If you talked about promise, you were synonymous. But right now, He says he fainted not, neither is he what? Weary. Then he says there is no searching of his understanding. In other words, there is a system in him that makes that possible. And he's about to reveal it to us. But he says he giveth power to who? The faint. And to them that have no might, he increased strength. Everybody read if you're a Christian. One, two, read. Even the youth shall faint and be where he stop. Did he say may faint? The Bible says the glory of the young man is in his strength. But he said no matter how strong you are, if you are in this world, your humanity will catch up with you. He says the young man shall faint. A day will come your courage and your, or your audacity will come to a point where you do not even know what to believe again. Please go back, go back, 30. Just stay there. 30. It says, and the young men shall what? Mm. This is a prophet speaking, you know. He's not just a messenger. He's a prophet. And then he says, this is a possibility that you can come to. In ministry, in life, as a student, it's easy to see five carryovers in 100 level and say, God is faithful. Your latter will be greater than your past. But by the time you are in your final year, final session, and you see two carryovers all second semester, you come, you come for koinonia by two o'clock, and you sit alone. When people are making noise around you, you, you just go outside. And people are saying, are you okay? Have you been in a situation where food becomes like a resentment? You don't even want to eat. You don't know whether you are hungry or not. You don't know what part of your body is paining you. Is it your head? Is it your hand? If somebody is talking to you, the voice of people literally is like noise. You want to be alone. This is the name of where you have gotten to. The realm of weariness. I heard of a great man of God in this country who because of depression a few years ago was almost committing suicide I, I can't mention his name you know but if I mention his name I, some of you will be discouraged and say I can't believe it no please tell me it's a joke literally suicide it was another man of God that called him and said you can't do this you can't do this you have come too far hallelujah the humanity of Judas caught up with him he said there's no remedy. If he was only patient for two more days, salvation would be possible for him. If Judas was, was just patient for two more days, there was a possibility that with the resurrection of Jesus, he would be free. And the guy went. He didn't manage his humanity. He, hung, he bought a field with the money, hung himself, and died. God is ministering to people right now who you are at a point where your humanity is eating up with you. Your humanity. You are anointed, but you have not prayed for days. The truth is you don't even know what to say. The problems from home are overwhelming. Your father that you have been managing, you have been thinking that this man is improving. He has now done something stupid. There is an episode for the week he does. 
But the one for last week has discouraged you and you are saying, will I continue like this? From one bad news to another, when it keeps piling upon you, brothers and sisters, it will shit you bad. That's why the Bible says, in Daniel chapter 11 verse 32, it says, they that know their God, the first thing that will happen to them is what? Strength. Strength. The first fruit, the first benefit of really, really knowing God is strength. Strength there means capacity. Capacity. That you stand through the storms of life. You stand through the challenges of your humanity. I'll never forget a man who was on his way to go for a program with his children. And they were on phone. And the next thing, the line just cut. And he thought it was just um, maybe network and all of that. And trying to call back, he just heard that somebody called and they told him, please, an accident just happened. All your kids dead. And he went and still preached. I mean your children, not spiritual children. Physical children. They died like chickens. Not that they have been sick for three years and you have expected that they may pass on and prepare for it. One moment you are talking with children who are happy and then a line goes off and then they tell you they are all dead. Not in coma, dead. Listen. If you are living in the world of today, you must be prepared. You must sustain capacity to absorb the shocks that life brings if you want to stand. Otherwise, a time will come when you see people go to Habalis is because of their humanity. At the beginning of the sickness, they vowed they won't go to any herbalist. They won't go anywhere. But by the time the leg starts producing pus, and they said they are going to cut off everything, or by the time they say the cancer is spreading around the body, at that point, they will say, look, there's somebody. Don't, don't kill. Don't. At that point, you won't know when you will enter a shrine with a goat and say, please do whatever you will do. Your conscience is judging you, but your humanity is ignoring it. A time comes when a lady, because of her depression, just gives in to a man and says, sleep with me, do whatever you want to do. I'm human. I can't stand this. I've endured for 11 years. Taking care of myself, this is too much, please, if it will help me. Years ago, when we used to meet inside the campus, I shared a very touching story that made me... It, 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 it did something to me. There was a woman who was walking through story with a man. And the, nobody in the family was walking. The father, everything. She was, the pay was too bad. And the family was at a point where they were choked financially. I mean to the core. And the woman went to the boss to plead that can he please give her a raise. Or promote her or give her extra jobs. And the man smiled at her. He had now gotten what he wanted because she was now vulnerable. And he told that woman, a married woman, he said, you know what you do. If you are ready to comply by the terms, I will promote you. She first refused. But when the financial burden pinned the family to a point that it was a matter of life and death, people were sick, no money to take care of them. She discussed with her husband and said, you are my husband, at least I'm not cheating on you. Is with your consent. Can't I just sleep with this man? I know some of you say, God forbid, keep quiet. You see some of our elderly ones here just keeping quiet, listening to me. Many young people say, God forbid. Don't say, God forbid. Until you are in a position that really pushes you to the wall. And the man gave her a consent. And she went and slept with the man. Truly, truly. He gave her a long sum of money. She was so frustrated afterwards, she left the job. Men have done things in our world because of the reality of their humanity. Their humanity has caught up with them. And their inability to sustain what I'm about to teach you. There are preachers right now who are broken and discouraged. They don't know what to believe again. They have preached every message they want to preach. There are people who have practiced all the laws of prosperity they know to practice. Nothing is working. They are at a point where they are frustrated. There are families right now trusting God for the fruit of the womb. They have done everything. They told the man to leave that one and get another wife. He said, no, I'll be faithful. But now it's seven years 
and the man has already given the woman a last warning. If by December you are not taken in, I will leave you. Please go and look for another man. Many things that you will not accept when pressure pushes you to the wall, you will look at them and consider them passionately. Then the Bible tells us, here is the formula, 31. Media help us, 40 verse 31. Awesome God, I lift my hands to you. Awesome God, awesome God. But they that wait upon the Lord, it says they shall what? It didn't say they will hear him speak. They will renew their strength. It says they shall mount up with wings like an eagle. Then they will run. And Satan is waiting for when they will be weary. But he will never find that place. 20 years they are not weary. He says don't worry. After 21 years they will be weary. 30 years they are still moving. Because like God, they have caught the system. There are men who Satan has been waiting for when they will go down. And he has found out that days are turning to weeks. Weeks to months. Months to years. Years to decades. Because of this system. That those who wait upon the Lord, they will run and not be weary. They will walk and not faint. So although you are human, when you started the ministry, they said, leave him. When building projects starts, all your anointing and revelation will scatter. You will stand and you will preach John 3.16 and you will quote Revelation 1 verse 1. But then like play, they will see a building rising. Rising. And then they will say, don't worry. By the time members start criticizing him, in the midst of it, you are still moving. You have sustained a key in the spirit. Are we together now? And the key is that they that... It's not just about fasting. It's a spiritual system that remedies for the encumbrances of your humanity. Since the Bible says for the fact that you are human, weariness and fainting and falling is an inevitable possibility, humanly speaking. Then he gives you a strategy. He says every time you start sensing that your humanity is dominating your spirituality, he says, wait upon the Lord. He didn't say go to God and go and discuss. He just said, wait upon the Lord. For when you wait, among the many things that will happen is that there will be a renewal of what? Strength. Proverbs chapter 14. I leave my hands to you. Awesome God, awesome God, I lift my hands to you. You're an all. 14 verse 4. I lift my hands to you. Awesome God, awesome God. Go ahead and read it everyone. One, two, read. He said, but much increase is by what? Of what? An ox. Listen. He said, much increase comes. Not just by strength. He tries to use an animal that, he, that can help him communicate the level and the order of strength we must have to finish. An ox is a strange animal. It's a farm animal. It's a very, very... When, when you see an ox, really, ox is not a very nice animal. When you come close to it, it even smells. An ox has no business with his physical outlook. All an ox is concerned about is labor. The vision that is set before it. An ox literally can drive a cart or a farm, a farm um, object through the farm. Through mountains, valleys, it will still push it. It gets to a point where it hooks. 
and you see it breathing uh, 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 and you think it's about to finish and it will push it again and continue until it crosses over the mountain and the bible says if you must stand and finish strong you must sustain strength like an ox that animal that communicates resilience that at the point where your humanity catches up with you like job while you are crying with the boils while you've lost everything you can say though he slay me yet will i praise him he said all the days of my appointed time i know that there is whatever has a beginning has an end if this issue has a beginning it has an end i sustain strength to continue a time comes when it looks like members are leaving your church members are leaving your ministry ministry is not growing you are praying for the sick and it's as if the anointing does not seem to find expression and this thing is destroying you he says by the strength of an ox an ox is the animal that even if it cannot move forward it doesn't go back again it stands there until rescue comes to it very strong animal many christians many many christians i have seen this thing i've seen it like i'm seeing your face that in i'm talking of a few years because of the unfolding of the culmination of this phase of the move of god and that which is starting not many people will be able to stand the kinds of persecutions that will come in the church will come on individuals there are many men of god who will literally quit ministry there are many women who will divorce their husbands because they are pastors and whatever because of financial hardship that comes upon people. I prophesied in 2007 about the recession that will start. People laughed at me. People criticized me. When it hit, I said I saw another one coming. That's not the only one coming. And brothers and sisters, when this tsunami hits and the earth begins to burn like an oven, you will see compromises of all sorts. Men who would never have bribed will bribe. Ladies who will, who will say, me, I have to marry a man of, somebody who loves God, will now say, anyhow, please salvage us. There are many ministries that will go through seasons of shakings. There are many men of God, men of God who you had never had issues about, men of God who were not even known for scandals. You will begin to hear things. Now, whether it's false or real is not the issue, is that it is there. You will see great men, fathers of faith, who will, it's, it's almost like they are almost being brought on their knees. Some of them will be accused directly by governmental authorities. Some of them will be linked to corruption. I'm telling you this, write it down. Some of them will be linked as they are pointing out people who are corrupt. They will link their churches and their membership to certain kinds of corruption. And the devil will orchestrate it such that they will be indicted in diverse ways. But it will take the strength of an ox. Some of their own members will write articles about them. And destroy them. And tear them down. Some of them will finally vent out their suspicions. But beyond this mountain of pain will come a move of the spirit and the excellency of his glory upon the church in unprecedented dimensions and especially the church in Nigeria. Every church called upon by God will go through this season. I guarantee you. It's not something you will pray against. It's something you will receive strength. Listen. Not every cup in the kingdom can be pushed away. There are certain cups you only receive grace to drink them. He said, I want to sit by your left and right. And he said, are you willing to be baptized with my baptism and to drink of my cup? This is a very scary teaching tonight. See the way people are quiet. I say, why did I come for Koinonia today? He says, by the strength of an ox. I see this thing happening to men. Many men. I saw it in the visions of the Lord. 
fathers who had been faithful for many years now started being unfaithful to their wives. That's what the Bible says, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of self. I saw a lot of pastors who got into drinking, drinking and smoking. I saw pastors getting into drugs. And I said, my goodness, not just drugs to satisfy themselves, drugs as business. Because the financial pressure of ministry was coming upon them. I saw people slaughtering babies. Babies. Even the young men will be weary. They will fall. You who used to love God, you had all kinds of ambitions. You have gathered people and said, God said we should start a church. You just gas out and sit and say, this thing, is it worth it? Is it not better for me? Is it not better for me to just sit quietly? There are times many of you will blame God for anointing you. You will literally blame God and say, Lord, I was minding my own business. What is all this one? Like Amos, I was just an ordinary farmer. You now came and called me. Oh, I didn't tell you I wanted ministry. Strength. We are in the seasons where this will begin to happen. I saw a release of strange arsenals from hell. I saw them flooding into Nigeria like bees, like black bees, spreading. It's like they had been kept for a time as this. See, when, when I tell you these things, I want you to know that my heart is heavy as I say it. I wish I didn't have to say it, but it's the truth. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord so many things many believers who say where is our God many people whose Christianity is not founded on love for God will leave God they will leave God in, in unbelievable ways they will turn their backs directly on God brothers and sisters when you begin to see this it has already started happening for many of you there are three faces that this will happen in. Number one is individuals. Number two is maybe churches or groups or territories. And then number three, nations and continents. We will see this thing. It's the birth pain of a new revival. It's like a woman who is in a labor room. Never allow the assignments of hell to prevail over you. Please hear me. I speak to you prophetically. Those seasons will come in your life. Believe me. You will thank me for this when the seasons come. It will look like everything you have believed is under fire. It will look like everything you have read about is a lie. Some of you will stand and almost feel like committing suicide. It's already happening to some of you. I want you to know that there are birth pains of a new dimension. And it is not a time to give up. Do not let your humanity swallow you. For just beyond it. Joseph was almost giving up. And by the next day he was the prime minister. God is counting on us for strength. God is counting on us. Many of you will walk alone. Listen. Some of you who are used to group endorsements. Oh endorse me. For some of you it will be a lonely road. Believe me you will walk alone. Some of you, your parents will look at you and insult you. They will say you are good for nothing. You are, you are a disgrace to me. I gave birth to you. Look at what other children are doing. The more you claim you are spiritual, the more you are failing in life. I'm ashamed of you. And you will walk in that lonely path. You will discuss things with your friends that they will use against you. And stab you to your back and say, I did it. At that point, you will almost not want to trust anybody again. But I'm telling you this, sustain capacity in the spirit. Those days will come. They are here already. I have seen them. Satan is out on a mission to discredit ministries and men of God. I, I saw like it was like bees that were released, like a swarm of bees. You will not imagine the levels of discrediting that Satan wants to bring to ministries. Why? So that their voice will no longer be heard. And then, 
the people will be depraved. The Bible says, in the days of Samuel, when the word of the Lord was scarce, that's what Satan wants, that there be no abundance of the word again. Listen, I want you to know that your spiritual life is annoying the gates of hell. Don't you think your prayers in the night is a welcome development to hell? They want to ravage your family, but every time they want to step in, there is a voice that cries at the gates of heaven in the night. When God wants to make it look like every prophet is fake, there are already prophetic people that God is raising and Satan has spotted them. He has seen it. He tried to destroy your, your preparation. But since you did, not, you did not stop, then he will now begin to move in strange ways. He says, by the strength of an ox. Listen, I tell you this. Churches will be scandalized in mysterious ways. Men of God will fall victims of women in mysterious ways. That's why I talk to some of us who are jealous over women. Be careful. Don't just laugh around and, and say anything goes. Be careful. It's good to be social. But the Bible says, be wise as serpents. He said, but be gentle as doves. Those who speak anyhow, carelessly talking anyhow, there are men of God that run their mouth anyhow. Don't give Satan an arsenal to strike you. But I see this thing happening. I see it happening. It's like an angel of death that is passing over. And only those who are immune will stand. I bring you this word from the throne. This is a word to the body of Christ. When the Lord showed me this, I said, my goodness. But beyond it, brothers and sisters, I saw an emergence of strange glory. Listen. I saw people coming out with tears in their eyes, but heavy levels of unction. Mm. I saw women coming a lot of people, some with bruises on their body like blood. But I saw again they were holding mantles. Like a cloak. Mantles. I saw others who had already crossed over. But they told people to hold their mantles and they went back into the fire to help other people. They had come out, but willingly they left it. I saw this happen. I saw families turn away from people. Families turn away from their children. I saw children turn away from people. I said, what is happening? It's the manifestation of these spirits. It's the birth pain of a revival. Everything that can be used against you will be used everything everything that can be used against you will be used the gates of hell will release his arsenals everywhere there are certain things you cannot stop but you must build momentum the bible says and the rains came and the wind blew but the house that was built on the rock stood I lift my hands to you. You're the awesome God. I lift my hands to you. Awesome God. Awesome God. I lift my voice to you. You're the awesome God. I lift my hands to you, awesome God. One more time, sing it from your heart. I lift my voice to you, you're the awesome God. I lift my hands to you, awesome God. Hear me. When these seasons come,
strength and capacity is what will take men through. There are times you may not be able to pray, but make sure you stay. There are times you can't explain to anybody. Make sure you stay. When your ego is stung to the core, when all you have held leaves you, stand. Haven't done all to stand. He says, stand. When your gift and the ability of the spirit upon your life is no longer appreciated, stand. When your loved ones who used to believe in you now turn and say, look, we even doubt if you are anointed, stand. 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 Hear the voice of the spirit tonight. Stand. Haven't done all to stand. 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 It will cost you. You will have scars. But stand. He's the awesome God. Awesome God. Awesome God. He's the awesome God. Awesome God. Awesome God. You are the awesome God. This is how the miracle working power will come to the church. This is how signs and wonders will be restored to the body. This is how the prophetic will be restored. Will be restored. This is the hallmark of the true apostolic ministry. The capacity to stand. You will listen to this message a thousand times. I promise you. I say it to go ahead of you. A day will come. No other message will minister to you. You will hear this voice speaking in your dreams. You will hear it speaking in your visions. When you are about to give, give up, you will hear stand. Mm. Stand. Stand. He said, fear not. Isaiah 43. I have redeemed you. He said, I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the river, it shall not overwhelm you. He says, when you walk through the fire, it shall not burn you. You want grace? This is the way it comes. You want power? I'm not just talking of trying to say I'm anointed. No. He said, let no man trouble me. I went through it. There is a scar. Brothers and sisters, not every man speaks and heaven begins to back them like this. There are scars. Preachers lie to you. They tell you there are no scars. But I want you to hear this voice from the throne. It takes scars to command power in the spirit. Awesome God, awesome God, awesome God, awesome God, awesome God, the faithful God, you're the faithful God, faithful God, mighty God. He's the mighty God, mighty God, glorious God. Hey, you're the glorious God, glorious God. We lift our voice to you. You're the awesome God. We lift our hands to you. Awesome God. My voice to you, you're the awesome God, I lift my hands to you, awesome God. Hallelujah.
There are rankings and there are promotions in the spirit. Hear me? When a man enters a new level of grace, you know. When a man touches a substance that is heavenly, you know. God is elevating men through these persecutions. But it's not going to come the way you expect. It won't come by clapping for you. No! Your voice becomes like the voice of thunder. When you have gained power in the heavens. He's the awesome God. Awesome God. You are the awesome God. The awesome God. I leave my voice to you. You're the awesome God. I lift my hands to you. Yeah, I lift my voice to you. You're the awesome God. I lift my hands to Hallelujah. Though weeping endures for a night, it says joy comes. Though weeping endures for a night, joy. With the morning, it will look like morning will not come. Stand in the fire. Stand in the heat. Stand through the persecution. Stand through the pain. Stand is the betting of the anointing. Is the betting of power. Is the betting of glory. For out of the shadows of your pain, His glory will arise. Out of your tears an unction will come upon your life out of your discouragement out of your humanity he that endures to the end you may not be able to sing but stand you may not be able to cry but stand you may not be able to pray but stand you may not be able to listen to any message. You will call on friends that will run away from you. You will call on family members that will run away from you. But stand. 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 Is a threshing floor in the spirit. Is a white press in the spirit. The anointing is rising from that pain. The anointing, power in the spirit. Unction, grace, a message, an apostolic and prophetic mantle will be your reward when you endure. I lift my head to you. You're the awesome God. I lift my voice to you. Awesome God, awesome God, I lift my voice to you, you're the awesome God. Listen, many people will criticize what I have told you now. Many people will say, forget about him. But I stand before the God whom I serve. And I tell you, it will happen. It will happen. It will happen. He said, that which I tell you in the secret, declare thou upon the mountain top. I've gone through my own. For many people, you are in your season. Others, yours is to come. This message 
is ministering to certain people right now some of you it is memory because you are past that level for some people it's strange because it will not minister to you until that door in one minute i like you to lift your voice and say father strength for the days ahead pray strength strength for the days ahead are you praying koinonia strength Barada balada bala koto pros koto bariada balada ba. Shaka da balada ba, shaka da balada ba, shaka da 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 ba. Le na na maria na 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 na. Raba shaka da balada ba, koto preka da balada ba. Oh Lord, we draw strength from the throne. Shaka da balada maria da balada ba, shaka da preka da balada ba. Le na na maria na mas ka maria da balada da. Shaka balada balada da. Rekete te te. Those outside, make sure you are praying. Imprapakata la Korea da balada basta. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord never told you you will not go through storms, but He said, "I will be with you." Hear this as a word of comfort. When all else fails, know that He is with you. I will be with you. Where you have no voice, call on him. Wait on him. Don't trivialize his presence. He's not one of many things. You will soon see that any other thing that is not him can truly not help you. If I followed the way of the Lord, I wouldn't have sold that land just because I was hungry. Now my family is in total confusion because of a bad decision I made. If I followed Jesus the way I wouldn't have beaten my wife. If I followed Jesus the way I would have trained my children properly. Pray. The Lord is giving us direction tonight. Are you praying? Because God wants to show us great mercy tonight. Father, show me the way. Pray. What is the way out of the confusion I'm in? It doesn't matter how you got there. Now you are there. There is a way out. Oh, there is a way out. If you don't look for a door, every house has a door. Finding the door is your escape route. You can guess what you think is the door. You can guess what society tells you is the door. Pray. Please be serious. How can I call on your name and end up in shame? No way. No way. How can I call on your name and end up in shame? No way. And bow to depression. No way. Hey. No way. Because you are my God. That's my testimony. Jesus away. You are my God. He says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Listen carefully. The righteous run is a location. You follow a path that leads you there. And he says if you get there, you are saved. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you. It is my passion to pray for people. I'm going to pray 
and it's not just about the meat. There are some of you who are not sick. You just need an end. Most of the problems here, I tell you, 90, over 80 to 90% of the problems here are requirements for an encounter with Jesus the way. The way. The way. There is a way to approach life such that you become victorious, persistent. There is a way to approach life that programs you to fail perpetually. There is a way you approach life regardless of the obstacles that come you must be on top is a way which way do you not know what principle i've taught us here it has become an anthem i will burn it until it enters our spirit for every outcome you desire there is a mystery that is allocated for the production of that result people don't just become anointed man of god listen anointing does not just come because you are tired of not being anointed no favor does not just come because you think you're a nigerian everybody who favors you has relatives who he can bless what makes you think that he will leave them and come to you there is a system in the kingdom that realities are allocated the mysteries listen please hear me your ministry will not just grow because you think you are anointed there is a system many people shadow box and guess their lives every time we are challenged we try to apply everything we know okay let's try the blood of jesus it didn't work let's try anointing oil it didn't work let's try this it didn't let's try agreement there is no mystery in the kingdom that is idle except you do not know that that it has been taught in a certain way does that not mean that's the result allocated to it you don't give your life by praying to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one who answers. But the system of salvation is resident in the office of the Christ. You don't, you don't pray to the Holy Spirit. Although it is the Holy Spirit who comes. The system of salvation. There is no other name. The name that, that um, works out the, the salvation of men is Jesus the Christ. Are we together? You don't come to a meeting and pray and hand over the meeting to angels. Why? Although they are the ministering spirits, but the, the angels of God function as commanded by the saints in partnership with the Holy Spirit. If the Holy Spirit does not authorize their operation, they cannot work. So there is a system. Could it be that something we are missing in our life could it be that although the Lord declared that this is our year of triumph, and for those of you coming for the first time, could it be that the cause of hardship in our lives is because we are ignoring something? Everybody say, Jesus the way. There are many people here looking at me who have become victims. They are good people, but they do not understand God's system of friendship. And so all their friends are bad people. Are we together? And so you find out that your chances of going to prison is 80%. Although you are a good man. Because the Bible says, blessed is the man who does not stand in the way of sinners. He's not a sinner. But for standing in their way, you qualify for implication. Nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Right? It says, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on that law, he meditated day and night. Doth he meditate day and night? As a result, he shall be like a tree. Watch this. That is planted by the riverside. All other trees wait for rainy season. But this one has found a constant source of supply. So it is ever fresh. Ever fresh. How can I call on your name And end up in shame no way, no way, I will not call on your name and end up in shame. No way, no way. Listen, every situation that brought you here has a way out. That you do not know the way does not mean there is no way. You know, sometimes David Dam said something when he came. 
when I came in, he said something that so ministered to me. We get used to our challenges. We get used to the wilderness that we conclude there is no way out. You can wallow in this forest of pain and confusion and conclude that your life has to be like that. From begging to begging. From pain to pain. From beating to beating. No. As a family, you can come together and say no more. There's something we are not doing right. This way is not age dependent. This way is humility dependent. You can be 60 years wallowing in the forest of confusion. You can be 10 years and find the truth. The Bible says, and ye shall know the truth. We are getting there. But there is a path. There is a path. Number two. Jesus, the truth. Give us again, please. John chapter 14, verse 6. There is Jesus, the truth. He said, I am the truth. Let me tell you what that means. I am God's opinion on all matters. I am the most valid information that is worth trusting. I am the truth. I am God's perspective on all matters. Listen carefully. Jesus the truth is a description of God's mindset. It's a description of God's perspective. Not just the way now, but an encounter with God's perspective. Life has a way that they teach you to operate. But it says, I am God's perspective. I do not lie. There are all kinds of lying statistics in our generation. Are we together? And God says, come to me. I have a report too. Federal, this and that. International organization for this and that. Came up with their own statistics about several things. But come to me. I am the truth. I am the truth. Are we together? Yes. Oh, one out of every two marriages must end within five years jesus said that's their statistics come i am the truth there is an information i supply you every the average age range in africa is 43 jesus said i am the truth the truth says in old age you will be fat and flourishing fat and flourishing not using your pension to continue living fat and flourishing there are informations that the bible gives and tells men you will never make it. We live in a generation of decadence. But let's look at the truth. Psalm 112. 112. First four verses. If I were you and I'm a gentleman here, I will receive it. You are a lady, receive it for it. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighted greatly in his truth. What will be the testimony of that man? Verse 2. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth regardless of all the armed robbers loitering around society his own seed because he has believed an information he said who has believed our report it is to that man that the arm of the lord has been made the arm of the lord does not just come to those who desire it's those who there is a report you must believe the generation of the upright shall be blessed verse 3 wealth and riches not shall be in his environment in his house and then he says and his righteousness endureth forever verse 4 unto the upright there ariseth light in darkness do you know what that means deliverance deliverance a man who stands for truth a man who understands the way of god somebody must arise to bail you out when things go wrong let me tell you do you know rescue is an anointing there is a grace that can come upon you and cause men to arise david was in the cave of adulam they were looking for him saul was looking for him and the bible says certain men came they entered a covenant with themselves and say you must be king not everybody is interested in helping you you can sit down loitering around begging give me a job and somebody has eight options eight options and he looks at you and says it's all right just go but when you understand this, when that truth becomes your shield and buckler, it does something. It compels men to react to you in a certain way. Everyone say, Jesus, the truth. 
There are many of us here seated now with lies in our bodies. Satan has used objects in our bodies to lie to us. There are medical reports that we are seated here with right now. HIV, cancer, a killer disease somewhere. There are ladies holding reports you will, you don't even have a womb in the first place. There's no possibility of a child. There are men holding reports. There's someone, oh, there's a report. You are going to die soon. You will not reach December. But the Bible says, whose report will you believe? The doctors are doing their best. We have doctors here. But it's their educated opinion. Jesus said, I am the truth. You go to school, they teach you to believe certain things. But when you come to the word, he teaches you. I am one minister of the gospel who believes in God. When I read my Bible, I believe. And I, if I be lifted, I will draw all men. That's the truth. So my job is to lift him up and then he will draw all men. That's what he said. That's what he said. That when men say there is a casting down, the truth about it is that you will say there is a lifting up. So I expect a lifting up all the time. Because you see, a true believer is a possessor. Tonight you have come here. Koinonia is a place where we tell you the truth. And shortly the power of God will prove that truth to you. That what you call a hopeless situation is only a relative statement. When you come before him, he can turn your wilderness into a fruitful ground. Hallelujah. Everybody say Jesus the truth. Son of man, what information do you know about these bones? Can they live again? And he said, Lord, I, I honestly, the reality of these bones, now I don't know. And he says, look, these bones can live. I believe, therefore prophesy. He said, I prophesied as I was commanded. The truth is not just an information, it's a force. It's a force that compels things to look like God. No matter what it is. The truth is God's mindset. Philippians chapter 2 verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. The truth is that they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. The truth remains true regardless of your experience or otherwise. You see, this is the thing about a believer. Your personal experience is too small to judge the validity of the word of God. If I die of sickness today, God is still a healer. Is that true? The information I'm sharing with you is very ego stinging. Because when you've tried everything you know to do. Have you seen people say, I've done everything I know to do. Or I've done everything there is. No. You just did what you knew to do. But there can be another way. There can be another information. Someone can be trying to open a door simply because someone told him turn it once and he tries, tries and then another information comes in. Lift it up. Turn it two times. Just because of that little information that person can stand there two hours wrestling with that door. Arise, shine. Your light is come. And the glory of the Lord is a reason upon you john 1 verse 5 the light shines in darkness arise shine the light is come and the glory of the lord is risen upon you i will arise and shine arise my light is come and the glory of the lord the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. Give us Isaiah 60 verse 1. If we can get it in Amplified, that's wonderful. Otherwise, no problem. Amplified says this. It says, arise. 
from the depression and the prostration that situations and circumstances have kept you he says rise to a new light arise from the depression and circumstance and prostration in which circumstances have kept you rise to a new life then he says shine be radiant with the glory of god let me tell you something there is an information that when you catch you can start laughing at your challenges you will not even pray about it again it will turn to laughter because you know that that truth will squeeze it into pieces i tell you this hallelujah Jehovah will be your everlasting light. He'll be your glory, your strength and your sight. The light of the moon will be like the light of the sun. And the light of the sun will shine seven times as bright. When Yahweh binds up the wounds of this world, Heals all the bruises inflicted by this world. Truth. There are things I found in my life about ministry. There are things I found in my life about the anointing. When I found them, I jumped. Jumped. Bishop Oyedeko will tell you that light broke and he screamed and turned and said, Yeah, I will never be poor again. There are other people who have caught certain things and they screamed and said, I will never be a mediocre again. What have you found? I found your word and I did eat it. It was a joy and a rejoicing. He said, My son, eat thou honey. When you find this thing, they are alive to those who find them, not to Christians. There is something you can find. Believe me, brothers and sisters, if you have not found it, you will think those who are talking are arrogant people. There are people who have found things. The Bible says the kingdom of God is like a man who had a treasure and it was missing. For as long as it was missing, that man was redundant and then he took light and then he started checking it. Are we together? Could it be that there is an information that you need to know about God? about life about yourself it was Gideon who was hiding because there was an information he did not know and all of a sudden the angel appears and says in case you do not know here is an information you are a mighty man of valor and Gideon said nobody has told me this I am the least in my father's family and we are the least in the tribe and that man arose from that revelation I'm walking in power, walking in miracles. I live a life of favor. I know who I am. I'm walking in power, walking in miracles. I live a life of favor. I know who I am. Everybody sings, say. of Jesus shout it say it again in the name of Jesus the days of ignorance are over in my life prophesied say the days of ignorance the days of lies the days of deception are over in my life lift your voice and pray in one minute Lord I entertain your light there is something you can know about you that will bring you into the anointing there is something your mother told you growing up. You are a failure. But hear the truth. Hear the truth. There is something Africa is speaking to you. That we are a third world nation. But in the name of Jesus I declare. I believe the truth. I believe the truth. No more lies in my life. Everything that is not consistent with the word of God, I refuse to believe it. Why we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. 
for the things that are seen are temporal, subject to change. Hallelujah. Please sit down. So they may look at you and say, Sister, you are getting to 40, no husband. Will you ever marry? That's their information. You see, when you introduce Jesus to the situation, the calculation changes. Uh -uh. Something that should be zero. Just because you introduce the reality, everything changes. The psalmist said, I had fainted, but God. I had fainted. I knew that I was over all. But God, when they brought him into the situation, it changed everything. Stop listening to lies. There are lies on TV. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are lies that we hear on newspapers. Oh, stop tithing. All those men of God are out to collect your money. It's with your money they used to buy clothes. And they rob you and you listen to a lie. And stay back and authorize Satan to destroy you. Our society is full of lies. People make money through lies. Jesus, the truth. There were many things. I didn't see many successful people in my life growing up. Those who were successful were very far from me. Culturally speaking, societally speaking, there was a mindset that was communicated. But when I began to search the word, goodness, I found another report. A report I was not born with. And all of a sudden, Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me. You know, today we took a stroll, um, myself and the head of protocol, after we went to greet a bereaved family, we went somewhere and I was taking them inside the campus and I decided to take a tour of the new structures they are building. And while I started passing some sites around the dam and down my eyes were almost, I was trying to fight tears. Do you know why? Because I saw locations where years ago I sat down to study the truth. I passed one place, a botanical garden on your way to the dam. I used to enter that corner and smuggle myself through somewhere and sit down. Broke, but had access to the truth. A failure and a mediocre, but had access to the truth. And this Bible, God gave me an assurance with the word. If you believe me, I will not play games with you. And I was stupid enough to believe. I said, Lord... After all, by default, I don't even have much. So if I don't believe you, I don't have any option. Ah! Look what is made in my life. Listen, if you choose to believe the truth, he will change you. They've lied to you that your life is not doing well just because um, there is... There is uh, there is something you are not you know you need to go and connect to this you need to do that i believe in favor but favor is only when it comes from god through men not from men if you don't give one hundred and fifty thousand to so 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 person in federal ministry of this you will never get a job that's how we do it you are not part of the we and you find out and the bible says that when a man's ways pleases the Lord, that's the truth. That he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. Are we together? Listen, the part of scripture you find and believe is the part that works for you. You can see two people operating on different dimensions of realities. Is the part you find. I have found from this word listen and i don't want you to be offended by what i'm saying but i found from this word that it is possible for a man to fulfill his days i found it i used to fear death i think it's one of the things we all fear because the teaching i got about death was that any day can meet you anytime and it looked like a very sincere talk until i searched i said god but how can i live my entire life being afraid i'm going to live a life traveling all the time right I'm in the air, I'm on road, 
in the morning, in the afternoon, there are armed robbers, weather conditions. What is the guarantee that I'm going? I mean, I can't live my life. I'm going for a crusade somewhere and I'm afraid. I want to go and heal the sick, cast out demons. But me, the man of God that God will use, you are now afraid whether you arrive safely. As soon as you arrive, your heart returns back and you are like, hey, thank you, Jesus. What is torturous way of living? But there is a truth. Ha! Ah. There is something you can hold and dear death you look at it in the face and say oh death where is thy sting now you see until you have caught that truth don't make mouth this is the problem we talk nonsense in church and say all kinds of things and become victims it is the encounter of the burning bush that qualifies you to stand before pharaoh when you have seen the burning bush you can stand before pharaoh and say hey pharaoh stop oppressing god's people because Pharaoh will not let you go just because you can speak English. Jesus, the truth. Let me tell you something. Life will dare you to your face. It will take the truth to build a world of fortification. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I believe the word of God. That's why we are gathered here tonight. This is called a miracle service. There is no guarantee anywhere that anybody will be healed. There is no guarantee anywhere that devils will be casted out. Let me tell you, without understanding the truth, any action you take is arrogance. You make a fool out of yourself. What is the guarantee that in the next few minutes, the Lord is going to step in and begin to produce miracles in the lives of people? Is the truth. As at morning, when they were fixing this place, what was the guarantee that people were going to come and all the seats will be filled? What was the guarantee that people will be following us from over 45 nations of the world is the truth there is an information you know the power of god that i believe you oh god and i'm ready to follow you will not lie to me i believe you you are not a man that you should lie not the son of man i don't doubt him i believe you my experiences notwithstanding i still believe you Number three, Jesus, the life. Hmm. A revelation of his power and his ability to make a life. Jesus, the life. John 11 verse 25 to 26. An event happened there, Lazarus was a man who had died three days and then Jesus said he sleepeth and they were going to go and resurrect him and when they went they saw his sisters crying now this was talking about physical death but it applies to every area watch this death does not just mean cessation of breathing it means cessation of life many of us are experiencing death in different areas of our lives when an organ fails that's death are we together the sons of the prophet were eating a meal and they looked and said ah there is death in this food and jesus said to her i am what what is resurrection bringing back to life something that is not supposed to have life again hallelujah that for me is the definition of hope 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 bringing back to life a dream that should not come alive again bringing back to life a destiny that should not come alive i live my life drinking and smoking is there hope for me jesus is called the resurrection i should have done well with my life but i'm 70 years now how many more years do i have when the resurrection comes he can bring back to life are we together i should have been a phd holder now but so 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 and so happened to me when the resurrection comes listen to me jesus has the power to make things that are dead in our lives come alive this is good news are we together so the Bible says, rejoice not over me, my enemies. You know my fall, but you have forgotten that there is a mystery of resurrection. 
rejoice not over me yes i know for now i do not have a job i lost my job yes i know that this and that may have happened in my life but there is jesus the life he can put life back he can put life back let me show you something the bible says very interesting well, let's finish it. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, although his kidney were dead, he can come alive. He that believeth on me, although his finances were dead, he can come alive. Do you know that hopelessness is, is one of the major causes of depression in our society? You know what hopelessness is? A perception that there is no press to anything that is worth producing any result again and people just give up society is full of angry people who just walk around and say look there's no hope no hope for this child no hope for this no hope for me again no i'm already past menopause no child let me just agree that i will never have a child in my life listen to what the bible says Job chapter 14, please give it to us, 7 to 9. Job chapter 14. Read it with me, please. One to read. For there is hope for a tree. For there is hope for Joshua Selman. For there is hope for any life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? For there is hope in spite of that medical report. Humanly speaking, you should put your house in order. Ask Hezekiah. When a true prophet came and said, Hezekiah, I've heard from God. When a man hears from God, who else do you consult? But Hezekiah said, no way. I know this mystery. There is resurrection. There is life. There is hope. He turned his face and said, God, let's talk. I know Isaiah is your prophet, but I'm your child too. Let's talk. Remember now. Come on, God. Don't act as if you ignore me like that. And God said, ah, 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 ah. He has compelled a dimension listen let me tell you tonight you have to insist for some things to come back to life don't come some of you don't even pray over some things again because in your mind you have concluded it's over that business will never come alive let we just give glory to god it's over it has gone that destiny will never come alive but it's okay i already know that i would never walk again my leg can't walk so my focus now is to just succeed I am the resurrection and the life. It says, for there is hope for a tree. If it be what? Cut down. I like that word. Cut down, not rooted out. Cut down means the root is still connected. The mistake the enemy made was to still leave you loving God. I, I, I know you lost, you lost joy, you lost peace. You made a mistake. I know you now have a baby it should not be but the mistake was that you were cut down not rooted out and the bible says that it will what sprout again talk to me agriculturists that you know that you can cut a tree and children can even put satellite dish on the tree yet it still starts growing have you seen a tree that they use for pole wire it doesn't stop the tree from growing I hear the joy coming. Hey, I hear the breakthrough coming. I hear the sound coming. Sound of abundance and joy. I see the lifting coming. Hey. Hold on. Listen. I tell you, the, the, the anointing of God is strong upon me. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Give us that scripture again. Give us that scripture. Because God wants to make a statement with this miracle service tonight. He says, for there is hope. Everybody say there is hope. Let the devil hear you. Let all the people who have sat down together in a meeting and say, will she ever rise with this carryover? With 11 carryovers, will you ever rise? The Bible says there is hope for a tree. There is hope for a tree. It says that it will sprout again and that the tender branch will not cease. We are reading to verse 9. 
though the root thereof be wax old in the earth and the stock thereof die in the ground verse 9 yet kabaratos kebranda katashiata hold on it didn't say through the arrival of water the scent proximity to life proximity to life the moment you come into a place where there is life it has not touched you yet your roots resonating with life listen listen those of you who have done physics there's something they call resonance is that true that when you use a tuning fork and hit at a frequency every other object within that frequency answers to it you were designed by the life-giving spirit so when satan tries to bring death and then you are seated somewhere you come into an environment where there's life deep starts calling on to deep your dream starts telling you i'm ready to come back to life forget the fact that i failed rejoice not over me my enemy we live in a society who are experts at burying people before they die ah look at this mama nine children all useless and she's coming for koinonia and they say keep going mama tonight the resurrection and the life the resurrection and the life hear me how about a man of god you know god called you you know he anointed you but truly you have not seen increase not in your life oh god well will the anointing come or maybe you were once anointed and something happened in your life and things went down and listen it is true that jesus died but did he die forever he died only for three days while he had resurrected men were still talking about his death could it be hold on could it be that some of you while you are in this meeting now other people are talking about your past life they don't know resurrection is happening they are still sitting discussing yesterday so every time they look at her they say i know this lady oh this lady is the most nonsense lady in our environment you were right but ask rahab shabbatos kotapriata listen do you know why god instructed that they killed everybody in jericho he did not want anyone who knew rahab's past to be part of those who follow her because she would be part of the lineage of jesus listen when god wants to make nonsense of satan he will keep quiet and allow men finish tearing you down sometimes you can even join them and tear yourself and then when he's done he says let me now show you the expertise let me show you what makes me god and he starts building many people conclude on men because they don't know god this god we serve are we together i always use promises promise come 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 with all my heart you would have concluded this guy was a capon in black acts are we together years ago with dreadlocks he came to zaria with dreadlocks and earrings he was an occultist of the highest order a territorial commander he ran away because they were about to imprison him but brothers and sisters rejoice not over me my enemy no 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 help them under the anointing please you would have concluded that this brother will never become a because our big mouth in society we are experts at talking about people but while they were talking about saul god was seeing paul ah. apostle but i don't even know who my father is i'm not sure they told me that fair woman is my mother that's the kind of background i came from don't worry the god of israel is an expert look at his life now a fiery man of god with grace and power and anointing hallelujah they had concluded on zacchaeus you are a thief you are a fraudster you are an armed robber and when god was going he had to climb the tree and god said come down zacchaeus is your house i'm going let me show you that I'm, I'm going to your house and at once zacchaeus said i will repay everybody and zacchaeus completely changed hear me i came to preach to someone tonight 
there is a dimension of Jesus called Jesus the life the life the life Jesus the life Jesus the life Jesus the life, Jesus the life. That everything that has died in a man's life can come alive. Even time can come alive. That's the God that we serve. Hear me. You have come tonight, some of us from far. Some of us from several things. And you have come to encounter Jesus, the life. The life-giving spirit. He can put life back to your finances. And the money you lost 10 years combined in one month can return to you. Listen, 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 please. Let's not make this thing look as if we are acting. We are talking about God here. Apostle, but this is 10 years. No child. And they told me that there are all kinds of cysts and growth in my stomach and then when the resurrection comes he all of a sudden first child triplets second child twins you say god stop he says stop what my name again that child one three two one registers his name the years that the canker worm has eaten hear me hear me mordecai Mordecai did something that was good and he was his testimony was archived in a book and dropped quietly you see ba, there is a day God gets angry and vows by his name I have seen this truly speaking that God vows a vow read it through scripture that he wants to lift a man when God vows a vow to lift a man I tell you not even your personal faith will stop you there is such a thing that God can say the appointed time is come. I've seen people lifted overnight. And frankly speaking, sometimes they've not even understood certain principles. God just vowed with his name. Tonight, I want your faith to be, please, look, listen, you have come before God. This is not a cinema to watch film. You have come with your heart open. I want you to insist tonight. All these three dimensions are dimensions that for a taking. But I perceive that one of the greatest dimensions we need is life. There is too much death. There is too much death in people's life. Dead organs. Hold on. Listen. There are people here. They can't walk 10 minutes. A young man. 25, 35 you walk 10 minutes, you breathe as if you would die. They go to the hospital and say, Mr. Man, almost everything we see is wrong. You need life. Oh. You need life. There are many ladies here with all kinds of lumps, all kinds of demonic things. Satan attempting to put another life because there are many kinds of life. But when his life comes, when his life comes, there are destinies you look at them like walking corpses you know everything is there no favor no open doors there are many men here you are hard working but there is no life you are just a body walking sweating toiling the cause of hardship from morning till night living from hand to mouth the key is not promotion the key is life life To draw from you again. again, again. To drink from you again. again. To drink from you again. again. We've come to the road.
number one I'm not walking out the same tonight I insist lift your voice and pray Lord I can't go back the way I came I place a demand a demand on your anointing a demand on your anointing Prayer point number two change my level, oh God. Change the dimensions. Take me to another level. Hey. Please keep standing everyone. Lord is going to move tonight in a unique way. Please let me have your attention. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. There's a lot to do tonight. We're going to do it in this order. I'm going to take the altar call now. And then tonight we're going to start with the sick. I just sense a very strong manifestation of the healing anointing. Hallelujah. Now, quickly, let me have your attention. My God, the power of God is so strong, so strong. I already see activities of angels you are in this place inside outside any of the overflows one two three four by the roadside i told you that the cure for the challenges of men is an encounter with jesus and there are people here some of you may be visiting for the first time but you know that you need jesus genuinely not just as a religious philosophy you truly need Jesus Christ. Some of you at one point, you handed your life over to him, but things went haywire. And right now you know that you need to run like there's fire on the mountain. Overflow one, overflow two. I'm going to count one to five. Please clear the way for them. I want you to run as though you are thirsty and they told you where water is. Leave your seat right now and run, whether you are inside or outside. I'll count one to five. Keep standing. One. Koinonia, celebrate them. Two. Are you running? Run to Jesus. Lord, I'm tired of my life. Tired of the way things have been. I can't pretend it. I'm running to you now. Three. Celebrate them. Are you running? leave your seat break your pride and run i need jesus in my life i need jesus in my life this is a, a matter of urgency this is no pretense this is no church i need jesus in my life have you decided to follow Jesus, no turning back. Run, 
no turning back. Have you decided to follow Jesus? No turning back. No turning back. One more time. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. in overflow three there and the Holy Spirit is telling me they are supposed to be part of these people overflow three please quickly there's so much to do there are three people I'm seeing in overflow three outside and the Lord is telling me they should be there don't allow your friends stop you I'm still going to give one more minute one more minute as the Holy Spirit is convicting you you're saying I want to come but I'm a bit shy Run, make your way quickly. Come and join us. Come and join us. Hallelujah. Look at me. Please let them come and join. Those of you in front, please look at me. I salute you. This is serious business here. Please, there's, there's nothing to be ashamed of. Hold on. Hold on. Now, you see, when most people give their lives to Christ, they come in emotionally and some are not even serious they come laughing pinching themselves lord jesus and they are laughing and not serious this jesus business is life we're not talking about a certificate we're not talking about a husband or wife the bible says the name of the lord is a strong tower please hear me as you are here make sure that your decision is genuine no one condemns you but i want you to mean it Please, don't, don't play games with God. This is the God of heaven. I want you to say this from the depth of your heart. All of you in front here and those joining quickly. If you are joining them, make your way to the front. Say this passionately and truly. Say, Lord Jesus. Say it again, Lord Jesus. Some of you are not saying it. Say it one more time, Lord Jesus. I believe in you that you are the son of God I believe that you died for me I believe that you shed your blood for my sin I believe that you resurrected for me this night I have heard your word and I declare that I need you in my life I hand over my life to you from now and forever i receive eternal life into my spirit i declare that from today i am a child of god satan you had my confession stay away from my life forever in the name of jesus let me pray for you now jesus we present to you the ones you died for when you hung upon that cross you saw them and they were worth your blood your tears and your death i ask oh god by the power of your spirit that you preserve them let this not be an emotional decision i pray sincerely that today will become the beginning of a new season of your grace your power your mercy upon their lives i declare your sins forgiving i declare and declare that from today you walk in newness of life I set you free from everything that holds you down in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. I congratulate all of you for making this most noble decision. Never forget this day. Never forget this day. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, I will ask you to do something very quickly and then you come back and join the service. I want you to follow who is waving his hands. Follow that gentleman waving his hands and they will lead you out and there are a number of people who will welcome you have your details please cooperate with them and uh, all the people attending to them let's make it fast so that they can return back please politely follow them they'll ask for your details cooperate with them 
everyone this way let's honor them as they go very quickly <laughs> hallelujah can we help them let's make it fast now we're going to do it this way um i'm going to start praying for the sick right right away we're going to pray for the sick now so that we can take out time um let's deal with the sick first i already sense a very strong manifestation of the healing anointing lady look at me the lord is asking me to stretch my hands i command that devil let her go now you had her confession i curse you by the god of heaven i released you now i'm seeing this lady tied snakes from her leg to her head i set you free this is koinonia the place of encounter i decree and declare that from today you are set free and there's something i'm seeing in your stomach i decree and declare that it leaves you right now in the name of jesus christ now we are going to pray uh there are certain cases i want to deal with by myself tonight um any case please listen any case whether you are in any of the overflows please i will pray for people overflow one i want you to match to your overflow those who are trusting god you came here with for yourself or for your loved ones um but let's do it this way all those who are trusting god for the fruit of the womb if you have an issue with barrenness or a blood related disease hiv cancer or any deadly disease whether you are in the overflow outside or what please come in and i want to minister to you myself hallelujah that doesn't mean please listen listen it doesn't mean if i'm not the one ministering to you you will not be blessed the anointing on me is upon everyone who will be standing to minister to you are we together now so let's not have a rowdy um a crowd there so overflow one i like all of you who are trusting god to be prayed for please i want you to move to your projector stands overflow two um overflow three those online connect by faith and um, we are going to be praying for you those inside make your way very quickly the special cases that i ask make your way quickly quickly please we have to be very fast there's a lot to do the reason why we take our time to minister to people like this is because god has anointed us for this reason hallelujah god has anointed us it's a privilege to carry his anointing and we must take our time to release blessings to god's people make your way quickly Look how many people need the touch of God. What a joy and a blessing to have the anointing and the ability to touch people. Can we all pray as a family whilst they are coming and ask the Lord to touch and heal and bless everyone. Lift your voice and pray. Everyone, lift your voice. Lift your voice, pray. It's a miracle service. Please, those that are coming in from outside, make sure it's only blood-related diseases, terminal diseases, terminal diseases. Otherwise, you can just wait at your projector stand and then they'll pray for you. Father, you have anointed, you have anointed us in this place. You have anointed this house to be a tabernacle of miracles. Lord, you have produced untold testimonies. It's a privilege to be extensions of your hand again, ministering to the needs of your people. It is your desire that in every territory, there must be a place where men and women can find the power of God at work. And Lord, thank you for making this such a place. Tonight, we pray that there will be abundance, abundance of your anointing in the name of jesus tonight is serious business i really perceive that there is need to minister to people we're going to have um some of our leaders stationed in various places please i want you to trust the anointing upon them as they come to minister i'm going to just make contact with them um there will at least be two two at different different points and then we're going to pray praise the lord we'll make it very very fast and trust god to minister to you please come um pastor femi Ejimi, pastor alpha west benga promise how many of you i think we need eight people i have to lay hands on you because i sense that we need we need a, a great one two three four five 
uh, Michael come one of these days we'll begin to train other people and help the, the idea is to help and build people um, Mike leave the keyboard um, someone else can play the keyboard you can come this is an opportunity we're going to lay hands and then we're going to trust God um, Shade will you be strong come she's always had the healing anointing you have the strength please come this lady you see it's a compendium of the healing power of God and um, so we're going to pray I think this is okay we're going to pray please those outside if if they don't ask you uh, if they are prophesying to you it's a different thing if they are giving you a word of knowledge it's all right otherwise you don't have to start talking talking and doing all of this lord we agree right now in jesus name my god there's such anointing on my hands as they lay hands on the people lord i decree and declare let your power flow in such dimension in such magnitude in the name of jesus christ let the anointing of the holy spirit come upon you in the name of jesus christ by the power of the holy spirit let the fire of god come upon you in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare that you will carry the anointing of the holy spirit um shade and promise will go to the overflow outside here by the road shade and promise benga and um femi this overflow and then mike and pastor alpha will be at the overflow overflow three now um Ejimi, will be with me here pastor alpha um huh? okay two of you are there okay fine who is left michael okay then join them outside this overflow here and then we'll walk with a jimmy inside here praise the lord lord we decree and declare let there be miracles right now let there be signs let there be wonders in the name of jesus let there be such a strong move of the spirit let the sick be healed while this is happening please um, I want you, if you need to make calls and ask your loved ones to submit their prayer requests, let's do that very quickly. We're trying to conserve time as well as maximize the grace that is available. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you all the praise. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. So we'll pray for you now. I want you to trust God for miracles. Trust God for miracles. Insist that God must give you a miracle. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. As we worship in your presence, there is healing. The Holy Spirit gentle touch is flowing. Jesus, in the name of Jesus Christ, I believe. There is healing in your name as we worship, as we worship in your presence. There is healing, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, gentle time. It's flowing. It's
Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit gentle, gentle touch, touch is blowing in this place. I want you to believe that there is no power holding on to your destiny that will go back with you. Please believe this night. There are strange spirits that are responsible for the sufferings. You see this dear lady? This lady came all the way from Lagos. Had to resign her job to come here because she was tired of what was happening in her life. It's not just about employment. Came here. This lady came, I think it was last week, all the way. Because she was nothing at all. She was employed, but oppression after him, oppression. There's somebody in the congregation. I'm, I'm seeing like uh, the Lord is opening my eyes. This is strange. And I don't know what it is that I'm seeing that has to do with elephants. I'm seeing an elephant. And I'm seeing like fire coming. This is a deliverance for someone in the congregation now as I'm talking. Um... I'm praying for the sick, but we're going to minister to other needs. But right now, the Lord is asking me to minister to such a person. So I'm declaring right now that every manipulation of spirits that resonates with what the Lord showed me, right now from here, I decree and declare there is no peace for the wicked. I command judgment right now in the name of Jesus Christ on such a person, wherever you are, in this congregation i decree and declare right now that the power of god touches you right where you are right where you are right where you are in the name of jesus right where you are right where you are in the name of jesus i'm seeing someone at the minister's stand the minister's son i'm seeing something like an arrow shooting out of your body lord in the name of jesus whoever that person is it must go now I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, every strange devil, every strange spirit, we decree and declare that this environment is completely not conducive, completely not conducive in the name of Jesus. I want you to look at this. Look at, look at, what, look at what the devil can do. This is a human being's face. Mama, come. Madam, is this our mother? How long has this been? This is one year now. A year one plus. Year. A year plus, yes. Her face just started swelling. It started bleeding from the nose. And before you know, it's her, one of her, this her eyes. I out. prayed for her the last time. Yes. You see it going down? Yes, I see it you going You see it down. from the last time? Yes. Who was there when you saw yes. the last time? It's going down. You see it going down now? Yes. I prophesy that in the name of Jesus Christ, right now, that the way this thing has started going down, it must go down normally. And hear me. Mama, any human agent that is responsible for this thing happening, are we together? If I am a man of God, that person must die this night. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because I'm looking at you. Hold on. I'm looking at you and I'm seeing the face of a woman. And I'm seeing a woman sitting on the ground. On ground like enchantment. I say it again. Whoever is responsible for terminating, attempting to terminate the destiny of this lady, by the God of heaven, may the ground open and swallow her now. God bless you. See, let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. Wickedness is very, very real. Very real. Very, very real. Very, very real. I want you to lift your voice in one minute and say, Father, judgment tonight. Pray. Lift your voice. Shabakato soto bakata. Lembrekete kata tata tata. keriata. Everything that must give way for the next level of my destiny to be open, I command it so. Now, by the power of the Holy Ghost. Inside, pray outside. Pray by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Pray. 
Shaka toko 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 kesh. Rekete kete kata bara 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 bas. Mata kato shepre kete. Lente pre kete basha bara 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 bas. Leke ta pros kata baranda kapras kata bara tosh. Are you praying? Make sure you are praying. Let her go now. Out! 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 I see the rain of your love. I feel the wind of your spirit. Now the heartbeat of heaven. Let us hear. I see the rain of your love. I feel the wind of your spirit. Now the heartbeat of heaven. Let us hear. So let it rain. going to pray seriously right now um, I've been seeing a lot of visions while praying for the sick hallelujah there are, there are many many demons that must go many not few many oppressed all kinds of um, strange strange demons bring this girl come bring her I'm seeing a spirit bring her let her go now Victory belongs to Jesus. Listen, hear me. Now, we are going to pray serious. That's why I took out time to maximize the healing anointing because um, we want to finish fast. We have leaders meeting. However, um, now that we have dropped this, please just focus. You have prayed now. Let me minister to you. Praise God. Stand up, please, everybody. We have to pray. These are the wicked spirits that are responsible for families families tonight i see an uprooting i tell you listen i want you to stand because i'm seeing people running out now by the spirit not like wanting to run away the spirit's running with them that's why i'm saying i'm i'm asking the people to stand we're going to pray please listen i want you to believe the forces that tie your life tie your destiny it's time for us to pray it's time for us to agree are we together? I want you to cooperate with me and let's pray. They are strange spirits. You will bring them out. Some, don't be embarrassed. This, this has to do with families. This has to do with individuals. Are we together now? Are we together? Yes, we are going to pray. I'm seeing like a Ghana must go. And I'm seeing it tied in the spirit. Whose destiny is that, oh God? It's time to be loose now. Bring them out. Please, I need strings, strings of the flowing sound, please. Bring them out. Shake it, take it out. Braka doso toba shata. At his word, every demon, every devil. There's no hiding place for any power of darkness. I decree and I declare in the name of Jesus. Bracato shoto breke teli abada. Hallelujah. Please hold your hands together. I want to pray a prayer. You are going to help your neighbor now. Something strange is going to happen to people. I want to pray because I'm seeing like fire passing from people to people. This this contact must be maximum. Lord, I pray. Anyone who is a victim of any oppression, as this fire passes now, in the name of Jesus. Once you see your neighbor manifesting, please let them come. In the name of Jesus, I release that fire right now. From road to road, from people to people, from road to road, inside, outside. I command every stranger, every stranger, every stranger, in the name of Jesus, every stranger, 
outside, overflow one, overflow two, overflow three, online. I curse that devil right now. That fire is burning. That fire is burning. Every principality, every power. Shaka ta 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 ta. Outside, mighty deliverances. Outside, from road to road, the power of God is setting people free. It's time for yokes of captivity to give way. It's time for age long captivities to give way. Paroto soze se siatata. Rakatos kabaria dabala koto shubia. Hallelujah. Everyone say after me in the name of Jesus. Just do what I'm telling you to do. Say in the name of Jesus. Every yoke of delay over my life, over my family, be judged now. Now watch what happens to you. I decree and declare, anyone with such yoke, I command judgment now. Judgment now, now, on those forces. Let them go now. Let them go now. Let them go now. Please lift your hands. Shabaratos Kotosh. Tonight I trust God for an extensive time of deliverance. Listen, the Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing snakes. This is what I'm seeing coming out from holes. Anyone here tied by any spirit, they come to you in the night to sleep with you. Fire at the count of three. One, two, three. Right now. Visitors of the night, strangers of men's destinies, I judge you by the God of heaven. Inside and outside, I judge you by the God of heaven. Hallelujah. Please put your hands. Sisters, lift your hands. Sisters, lift your hands. Sisters, lift your hands. I want to pray a very serious prayer right now. Sisters, lift your hands. If there is anyone here having any spirit molest you in dreams, appearing as men, appearing as women, appearing as animals, at the count of three, as you shout Jesus, Jesus the life is destroying any death. Are you ready? One, two, three. I command those devils, those strangers, strangers, powers of witchcraft, molesting people, the daughters of Zion, I curse you. I curse your covenant. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Say, every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Hallelujah. I saw what I'm seeing now in much miracle service and the Lord is asking me to stretch my hands I'm seeing padlocks that's what I'm seeing this is representing men's destinies nothing is happening in your life you are not lazy but doors have refused to open right now at the count of three I want everyone to shout Jesus as loud as you can some of you will literally be caught up in visions and you will see the doors of your destinies open Right now, oh God, I declare that every padlock over any man's destiny, 
over any man's life at the count of three they are open one two three Hallelujah. The Lord is asking me to take away the spirit of death over families. Listen. You may not even know, but I want you to believe. I want to pray for you. Death is a spirit. Death is a spirit. Death is a spirit. I'm speaking now. Death is a spirit. Oh, death, where is your sting? Right now. I'm seeing at least 47. I'm seeing the number 47. Every family with death hanging over them. Fire! 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 Upon every family. Fire! Fire! The spirit of death broken. Hallelujah. Can I pass through the crowd for a moment? I want God to do a quick walk. Please listen. I don't do these things out of religion. It is the presence of God. The presence of God. I don't have time and there's no opportunity to lay hands on anyone. But listen. I just come across your role. I just want you to believe. Listen, except it is not the spirit of God, but any other strange spirit aside from God, regardless of what it is and what is causing in your life, it must give way right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, just play me. Father, in the name of Jesus. Listen, please, I want you to believe. This is not about human washing, but as I pass your role, I'm seeing fire on my left and right. Tonight is the ministry of fire, and like a wildfire, it will pass you and begin to consume things. Some of you, as I pass that physical fire, that heat, Lord, let it be right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, Rakoto Shoprekete Baratokosia, Brakato Toto Ketata. Rakato Shabariakata. Take it here. That fire, fire. Judging everything. Judging every evil. From every row, row to row. Row to row, row to row. That fire right now. Every witchcraft, every power. Every witchcraft, every power. Tying anyone. Someone's womb is being loose now. Someone's womb is being loose. Someone's womb is being loose. In the name of Jesus Christ. Can I go out? Is it, is it possible? Those outside, lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Hallelujah. Please quickly, we're out of time. We have to conserve time. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, all of you right here, through this place, I'm looking and I'm seeing change in the spirit. And as I pass this overflow, please, I want you to believe that every captivity must come to end. I hear what I'm saying now. It must come to end. Father, I give you all the praise right now. Right now. A chain is leaving somebody here. A chain, a chain, a chain, a chain. Go, go, go. Now, 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 now. Chains, 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 chains. I break it now. Break it now. I break it now. I break it now. I break it. Now. I break it now. In the name of Jesus. 
you don't have to touch me just be there's somebody here the yoke of delay is breaking now 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 it's breaking now by the power of the holy ghost breaking now break now breaking now breaking now in the name of jesus in the name of jesus Breaking now in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I'm seeing a cloud on this place. I release that fire. It's breaking now. Right. Right. Right now. Right now. In the name of Jesus. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Help them. Help them. Please hold them. Elisha, 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 who is that, Elisha, where are you coming from, maybe you, sir. maybe you, maybe you here, yes. I want to pray for you, the Lord wants to give you and your family breakthrough, yes. Elisha, I wish we had time, but in the name of Jesus Christ, I'm declaring, what's your name? Daddy's name is Elisha. Your daddy's name is Elisha. That's all right. I'll pray for you. Why are you here? You are Elisha. Look at me. I want you to believe in the prayer. I'm going to pray for you. God is going to give you strength in your place. Amen. I'm seen like a shrine on fire. Hold on. I'm seen like a shrine on fire. And that fire in that shrine will manifest physically over somebody's life. It's time for this family to be set free. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. It's time to be set free. It's time to be set free. Elisha, I pray for you. Now hold my hands. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare something is leaving you now. As I'm holding your hands, I'm seeing something leaving you. Let it go for you and your family. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Your dad needs breakthrough. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Lord brings that breakthrough right now. The Lord brings that breakthrough right now. Please, if we can get some of the people outside, make sure everyone is protected under the canopy. Otherwise, let's see how we can squeeze some of them inside. Even if it's just for the sake of um, when the rain minimizes, they can go out. Please, make sure nobody is standing in the rain. Those standing at the edges of the canopies, we can allow them to come in. Just come and squeeze them somewhere, please. Make sure, no, especially women with children, please. Please, make sure that we allow them, please. They can come, just stand anywhere. The goal is us, please. Just give them room, just orderly. They can come in and stand anywhere. recurrent issues the Lord is addressing them now our time is gone but I'm praying recurrent issues the power of God is going to fall on people now I don't know how those outside will do but I pray for grace for them but I'm seeing 
a grace to destroy recurrent issues issues that come you solve them and they come back again where are those people i stretch my hands right now in the name of jesus that fire is visiting them now recurrent issues the lord is setting people free right now recurrent issues please help this this woman recurrent issues that devil is going right now in the name of jesus recurrent issues recurrent issues never again in the name of jesus never again by the power of the holy ghost please i know it's raining but participate god is touching people i'm seeing it again recurrent issues issues that come and you think you are done with and they return back i decree and declare that fire is coming now that fire is coming now recurrent issues in the name of jesus be set free right now be set free right now be set free right now hallelujah Toin. Toin. What's your name? My son name is Toy. Toy. I will pray for you. I'm seeing serious witchcraft in this lady's family. This is this is heavy satanic oppression. Huh? Heavy satanic oppression all of you are toying what's your name my auntie Who? my auntie's name is toying i will pray for you please make sure you are toying don't come out carelessly but hold my hands i will pray for you i will use you as a point of contact to pray for your family hold my hands with both of your hands your family must be free from witchcraft lord jesus ah fire fire on every altar fire on every altar of witchcraft i command i use as a point of contact and pray for every family under the yoke of darkness under the yoke of bondage i command your emancipation now i command your emancipation every family under the yoke of darkness are you towing huh? you have bad luck bad luck on your life very bad luck hold my hands hold it with both of your hands lord jesus this is a miracle service set this lady free this yoke of bad luck i decree and declare that it must leave you right now in the name of jesus christ it must leave you right now your sister in the name of jesus christ i pray for you the same way god is touching her may god touch you too in the name of jesus christ in the name of Jesus Christ, my dear, you are towing. My auntie. Where is she? What is this for? This is my family. My mom left my dad some couple of years ago and became a mother. And her immediate younger sister to me also moved Hold the photo. You believe that when I pray for you, God will touch them. Lord, visit this family right now. In the name of Jesus. I release the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus through you let it touch your family please don't come out carelessly don't come out why why is she out why are you out my dear huh my sister is doing okay I will lay my hands on you be free of your mother your mother something is leaving your mother in the name of Jesus I curse that spirit in the name of Jesus Kai what is this look at i'm seeing a snake this is what i'm seeing i'm seeing a snake i'm seeing a snake 
I'm seeing a seal. Please just thank God it's raining. If you are inside, don't complain. Those outside are enduring the rain. Just keep quiet and allow God to visit you. Snakes. I saw a snake from this lady and I'm still seeing snakes around. There's no hiding place for darkness. Rakato Shoto Prekete Kata. I'm seeing snakes. Lord, let there be deliverances. Let there be deliverances. In the name of Jesus, inside and outside. Let there be deliverances. In the name of Jesus. Let there be deliverances. Let there be deliverances by the power of the Holy Ghost. This lady, come. This one with the throne. God is going to use you mightily. Lift your hands. I'm looking at you and I'm seeing a, a lady that God is going to use mightily. That doesn't mean after service you come and start disturbing her. God is going to use you. Father, let that grace, that fire, this lady is going to be mightily used of God. I decree and declare, I don't know you, but I declare in the name of Jesus Christ that you must be free. I declare, don't worry, deliver. In the name of Jesus Christ, every access given to you by darkness, I close it now. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost, I close it now. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I close it right now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I close it by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I release that fire and that power. There is no hiding for any darkness. Release every breakthrough. Release every destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hold on. I'm hearing Memuna. 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 I don't know if he's here or outside or someone. Your love. Memuna. Huh? Is what? Your step, okay. Memuna. No, I'm seeing something else. I will pray for you. Memuna. The Lord is showing me something else. Your name is Memuna. My younger sister. My youngest. Okay. I lay my hands on you. Look at me. You are not progressing. Hold my hands. The Lord wants to move you forward. This is not even in the name of Jesus. I release you to move forward right now. I command that you move forward in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord gives you visitations by the power of the Holy Spirit. Ah, hold my hands. Hold my hands. Both of your hands. I lose you to prosper and I lose your family to prosper. You came out to stand for someone, but you are the one God is giving the visitation. I decree and declare it by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I command right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. You won't believe what I'm about to pray for. I'm seeing written in the air forgetfulness. There is a strange spirit that comes upon men and causes them to forget things. Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, if you are here, whether it is memory loss or strange forgetfulness, the things you should do, you forget them and you pay the price. Wherever you are, I release you from it right now. I release you from it right now. I release you right to the back outside all the overflows anyone who has that manifestation in their lives I release them right now in the name of Jesus Christ I release them right now I release them right now I release them from it right now in the name of Jesus Christ I release them right now why is he here why are you here sir uh, my cousin is what my cousin we are here last week but he didn't come today your what? My cousin, Tony. Tony. Okay. In the name of Jesus Christ, may God touch them. Whatever their issues, I declare that God will resolve it right now. In Jesus' name. 
I'm seeing somebody I need to pray for. Physical money disappears sometimes from your pocket, sometimes from your bag. I'm not talking of stealing. Listen to what I'm saying. Don't just come out carelessly. Physic money, you can hold money like this and count it and see that it is less. It has disappeared. Who is that? I need to pray for you. It's a very serious issue. Yeah, na 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 na. You? Hallelujah. Kai, the Lord is showing me something very serious. There's somebody, um, don't be embarrassed. You woke up physically in the middle of the night. And now I'm not saying you idolize animals, but there was a rat, a physical rat, not running around. You were looking at it, it was looking at you like this. There's someone like that here. Rat, it was looking at you. You were wave your hands. Let me know you are the one I'm talking to. Come out, come and stand here. I'm not saying if you have rats in your rooms, that's not what I'm this. This is a special, unique, demonic case. Come. Kai. This lady, I have to pray for you. Favor, zero. Breakthrough, zero. Trouble, 100%. Father, in the name of Jesus, change this face I'm seeing. Shakatos koprakato, zakatolia katapakanda pratisia. Lekos kapranda gada shuse preketekatos. In the name of Jesus, zekata tata suzia. Mante pros katapranda katolia kata. Shakas kende kosh. Akras kate zeketons kamatan zekata. Reketo sekete kete kata bakata. Mamprato soto bere kete riakata. Sasesesekata. Maproto soto topaka. Embriata sada siata. Shakel kata maskata bariakato. Embre kete 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 kete. Rekos kososo pekete de kata. Mebriata sise kotosho pariakata. Break the chains, break the chains, break the chains, break the chains in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. There is somebody, your grandmother appears to you. Your grandmother appears to you. Where is that person? Come. Don't be embarrassed. This is a serious issue. Our time is gone, but thank God it's raining. We are going to round up. Your grandmother, you see your grandmother. She appears. Who is that? Wave your hands. Come and stand here. It's a very demonic thing. Your grandmother appears to you. Come and stand. Grandmother appears to you. Who is that? Wave your hands. Let me know you are here. All of you that see your grandmother, come and stand here. We have to break you from that demonic thing. What fellowship has righteousness got to do with lawlessness? This Lagos lady, God is on your case because you need to be thoroughly, thoroughly delivered. There is a spirit that is oppressing you and there's no hiding place. You hallucinate. This lady literally sees things. She can be here physically. It's, you know what they call astral travel? She can live, not vision, live physically. This lady, I command that wicked spirit. In the name of Jesus, and whatever she sees about you, except you are powerful, it must happen. It's a spirit. She doesn't even know why. In the name of Jesus, I'm looking at her and I'm seeing a cat. I curse you by the God of heaven. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please don't be tired. I know our time is gone, but it's raining. Let, let, let's just visit these things because... Come. You are a beautiful girl, but no favor in your life. Shift. Let me talk to this. This yellow girl, come run. God wants to wipe your tears. Ah, I'm looking at you and I'm seeing something like a crown on your head. Come, you must be delivered thoroughly. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let this cause of disfavor. This is a beautiful girl, but there's no favor in her life. Shato Soto Bakata. Randa Koto Soto Kete Barakata. I decree and declare every legal access of darkness. I curse it right now. I curse it right now. I open the doors. I open the doors from the realm of the spirit. Let there be favor over your life. In Jesus' name, hold on, sir. I need to pray for you. 
this encounters supposed encounters has retrogressed your life i hear what i'm saying i have to pray for you because you are not supposed to be at this level right now you too you see your grandmother where are you from kalaba no obudu obudu cross river obudu cross river i have to pray for you please if i if i didn't call why are you here are you sure you know why you are here huh you see your grandmother Kai. there's somebody here hold on all of you see your grandmothers don't laugh you see let me tell you this is not some it's not mockery it's not i'm not saying every vision of grandmother is demonic please don't get me wrong these are very special strange wicked and demonic issues special strange wicked and demonic issues someone has fallen down there please let the doctors attend to the person make sure you are your brother's keeper so that they don't fall down and injure themselves hallelujah praise the lord hi you come what business do you have to do with dead people dead people eh? hold my hands say in jesus name say it seriously in jesus name every affiliation with the dead i curse it now i release an anointing upon you now everything you have to do with dead people in jesus name do you love jesus you love jesus huh mm -mm. you are not serious with jesus hold my hands how are you don't be embarrassed but um the first thing you need is your relationship i'm looking at you i can't i don't want to embarrass you but you need jesus seriously i love you eh? that's why i'm helping you i love you with all my heart go and meet the who um where's pastor alpha just meet him he will talk with you you need counseling he's your own is not just grandmother god just brought you out here to in your destiny is needed please go and see him. he'll talk to you now all of you who are having these issues i'm going to lay my hands on you now when i lay my hands on you i want you to believe there is this strange kai i'm seeing somebody someone appears to you in the night and when he appears to you please don't come out at random as soon as he appears to you your spirit literally starts leaving your body literally as in you feel yourself you will come out and you will see you again lying down on the bed there's somebody with that case that situation right now i have to pray for that person right now i have to pray for that person right now something comes pulls your spirit out like it's going i will lay my hands on you all of you are so many father every affiliation with darkness i'm going to lay my hands on all of you very fast sir i'm i'm looking at you and i'm seeing the spirit of poverty and lack serious poverty yes sir eh? yes sir nothing works yes, sir. your life is like a basket anything that enters goes out i'm not embarrassing you eh? you are saying it money works. leaves your hand even if they give you one million it was find a way of going yes, yes, sir. You are man, it but money does not stay yes sir is that true yes sir do you tight yes sir. you are not consistent one two um you see this consistency of tightening is one way to drive the devourer god is not a magician you have to be consistent Praise God. God blesses you ten times. You tight once. Your heavens are completely closed. Father, in the name of Jesus, I lay my hands right now and I command breakthrough. In Jesus' name. Let me lay my hands quickly now. You're the God of miracles. Amazing God. You're the God of miracles. In the name of Jesus Christ. Out. You're Go now and cost that spirit.
Father, Lord, thank you so much for your patience. I just took advantage of the rain. I want to prophesy over your life now. We're going to be very fast, five minutes, and we're out of this place. Please, I want you to believe every prayer that is coming now. Every prayer. Come. Every prayer. The Lord is taking you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. A new dimension. A new level. Cameraman. God is wiping your tears. Keep the camera first. Wiping your tears. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is wiping your tears. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is wiping your tears. This lady. I'm praying God is visiting her family. That lady standing close to Ella. I'm seeing a vision that the Lord is going to show her a breakthrough. I'm commanding right now in the name of Jesus. Everything tying down your families particularly the lord is asking me to release family now in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus now i decree and declare by the power of the holy spirit in the name of jesus christ i prophesy those outside please follow me those online follow me our time is gone but let's just be patient two three minutes we're out of here I decree and declare from tonight move forward in the name of Jesus move forward in the name of Jesus move forward in the name of Jesus make progress 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 in the name of Jesus advance in the name of Jesus advance in the name of Jesus be fruitful in the name of Jesus be fruitful in the name of Jesus multiply in the name of Jesus anyone here who has lost anything in your life I declare I'm seeing 28 in 28 days 28 days from now I command that it comes back to your hands I command that it comes back to your hand I command that it comes back to your hand Anyone here who has been victimized by life, by circumstances, by men, I decree and declare, may the God I serve vindicate you right now. Everyone here in need of direction, you are praying, oh God, I need to know what step do I take. In the name of Jesus tonight, strange encounters that bring you direction. Strange encounters that bring you direction. The yoke of poverty and hardship and lack. I command it to live your life now. I command it to live your life now. Live your family now. Live your destiny now. I pray for every family represented here. Whatever you are trusting God for as a family, I release my faith with you and I decree and declare that it is turned into your testimony now. The kind of favor you have not seen from January till now, I decree and declare from tonight, not tomorrow, from tonight, let it start working in your life. Strange favor in your life. Strange favor in your life. God has placed his honor upon this ministry. I pray for you from today, anywhere you go. Whether they know you or not, I command them to honor you. Believe it, I command honor upon your life. In the name of Jesus. Two more prayer points and we are done. Whatever has made your pace of your life slow. Some of you are moving forward, but you are too slow for your destiny. At the rate you are going, you will not do much in your lifetime. I prophesy to you. In the name of Jesus, receive the grace for speed. Receive the grace for speed. Do in one month what you have not done in five years. In the name of Jesus Christ. And finally, I pray for you. Whatever has taken advantage of your spiritual life, your prayer life, your fasting life, word life, passion for God, passion for the house of God right now I stretch my hands and I declare fresh fire on your altar prayer fire on your altar 
word fire on your altar fasting fire on your altar I decree and declare upon everyone receive a manifestation of the spirit of revelation in the name of Jesus let me add one last prayer point judgment upon the wicked let it begin tonight some of you don't like the prayer I say it again judgment upon the wicked in the name of Jesus Christ that every man woman boy and girl that partners with darkness to frustrate your destiny may the God of vengeance arise in the name of Jesus Christ wave your hands to Jesus father we give you all the praise hello beloved in Christ we hope this message was a blessing to you I would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching